I look in the mirror and say, we gon' be okay That nigga look back at me and say, we already straight Take a look at my watch and it's time to make a play That ain't time to wait for no man, bitch, get yours, but it's too late don't get mad, I'm livin', livin'. Don't swear, I gotta be livin', livin'. Try to stop a nigga on the pivot, pivot. Try to cop my style, I had to switch it. Well, I'm big, fat, bad, with twistin'. Nigga ain't know my love, I'm livin'. Livin'. Baby mom walk past me, switch it. She got that ass on, I'm hittin'. Uh, I listen to myself, man, I say, damn, that nigga spittin'. Well, so loop my joke when the ground come from Chicago, shit hit different. different. I watch out for them folk, now they like nigga, we bullshit. bullshit. It's too many trying to give me advice, right. but that ain't how you livin'. Uh, blood my pockets in my spirits. Spirit. I just find a pocket, know you hear it. Nigga, yeah. out of pocket, I don't fear it. Better Respect it, so don't come near it. Go. Big blunt, smoking weed, rolling boat. Bad chasing, getting to that dope. Brands in the scale, all I know. Clientele pointing to the dope. Thorns hurting in my fingers, so still talk a woman out of clothes. I ain't never played with my nose. How you Ay. try me to get exposed? Yes, yeah. they fell for the hype, but that's the shit I don't like. Try and get my paper right, but that's the shit I don't like. I look in the mirror and say, We gon' be okay. okay. That nigga look back at me and say, We already straight. Hey. Take a look at my watch, and it's time to make a play. That's ain't time, don't wait for no man, bitch, get yours, but it's too late Hey, get no fuck, fuck, leave it up, up If it's 99, problems pour it in a cup, nigga Fuck them nigga, bitch, we ballin', I ain't from the bluff, bluff. Cut my bitch, yo, and the devil, yeah. please don't thank you too I ain't walkin' that bitch, I'm skippin', skip Blowin' get here, now you can't hit it, hit it Don't show me that shit, I get it, get it Hit a lick, now I'm feelin' terrific My taste in women is exquisite, exquisite. My taste in shoes expensive Bitch, I on you, boy, I'm with it Need my bank account tremendous, boy. My account gotta use pimp, this pimp Put it in my pocket, who pimpin'? What? These niggas got a sickness, Ay. They sick of watchin' me win it, go I forgot the haters, Ay. but now I can't forget, bitch I ran out of paper, paper. I made them know the hit list I still don't wish bad on nigga, cause I heard that shit come back I was lost, now I'm found worried about where the fuck you at I been on the grind, though, grind. living this flip, dip, never hard to find Oh, I'm in the kitchen with this sex I feel like the trap I made a pack, do jumping jacks, dick I look so pussy, like the look with my thundercat How she looking when I get done, you won't even want to bet He trying to do something new, we already moved on from that I look in the mirror and say, we gon' be okay That nigga look back at me and say, we already straight Take a look at my watch and it's time to make a play That's ain't time, don't wait for no man, bitch, get yours, but it's too late What? You know? Fuck, fuck, leave it up, up If it's 99, I promise pour it in a cup, nigga Fuck them nigga, bitch, we ballin', I ain't from the bluff, bluff Cut yeah. my beat your ass, hey. dead, bitch, please don't thank you tough, what? Mom, mom, mom I look in the mirror and say, we gon' be okay What it do, bro, ski? Another episode. Mob at the dark. It's mob at the dark. Oh yeah. Hey. Got damn mob at the dark, man. My sleep pattern so fucked up, bro. <laughs> my sleep pattern really, really, really fucked up. After my own live stream today on uncut. I got me something to eat, went my dumb ass to sleep, and I just woke up not too long ago. Rolled me one up, and I was like, hey, you know what, man? Let's practice consistency. Let's practice consistency. I've been lighting it up over here the past two streams. Replay been silent and strong. I don't know, this, this, this channel pretty healthy right now. The channel doing pretty healthy right now, you know what I mean? So, hey. Let me not lack off. And at the same time, I ain't trying to end up like this nigga. I seen this little clip real quick before we get into the Drake and Kendrick rabbit hole. But that's what I was doing. <laughs> that's exactly what I was doing before I turned the live stream on, man. I was just scrolling and looking at different videos. All this Drake and Kendrick Ross in the game now. And I'm like, damn, boy. Rick Ross is way more funnier and i feel like he's way more effective internet trolling than actually making songs and trying to drop a diss track on drake or whatever he's doing the trolling that he's doing on the internet bro this is undeniably funny man <laughs> so yeah we're gonna check up get in this rick ross kendrick well not rick ross but the drake and um kendrick rabbit hole or just 
what's going on in hip hop right now. But before I see somebody letting the internet stress them out, man. Jesus. And I be there too. Like, it happens, it happens, it happens. Especially when you're trying to be great on any platform. You're trying to do good stuff. It's always going to be some challenges, man. It's always going to be something. But the goal is to come on, have fun, entertain your audience. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and yeah, that's just about it. All the extra stuff. Internet driving people crazy, man. What did the snake ask TD? Dang! Loud enough. What, what did he ask him, bro? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm interested, though. Jeez, I went to vertical streaming on Uncut. I'm thinking, of, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking it was going to do like how I be doing on this channel. Nah, that's a different. Have I ever been? <laughs> Bro, everybody on this TD Jake shit, man. There's 11,000 people in here. There's 11,000 fucking people in here. And you guys are not tapping the screen, okay? Make sure that you're tapping the screen. There's 11,000 people in here. There's 11,000 fucking people in here, okay? Tap the goddamn screen, okay? Tap the goddamn screen. Okay, you see this button right here? Press the fucking button, okay? Press the fucking button. Thanks, Safala. So you guys are amazing. Bro, this NPC shit out of control. And the thing is, I was on TikTok last night watching this nigga do that shit. I can't do it, dog. I can't be that NPC. I don't think I can be an NPC, dog. That shit hard. It look Let's hard. Let's talk. That gap was uncomfortable. What's more uncomfortable? And when I first seen the trend, I'm like, what the fuck are these kids doing? Workers are women. Oh. Hey, hey, thanks for the gummies. Hey, fuck nigga, what you said? Bro said do that stupid shit at home. What you said, fuck nigga? Hey, what you said, fuck nigga? You said don't stoop to that low. What you said, fuck nigga? Hey, come here. Come here, let me knock your teeth out, nigga. Bitch ass boy. Bitch ass boy. Come here. Let me do my nerdy shit in peace before I beat your ass, nigga. Fuck wrong with you. These niggas think I'm weak or some shit. I'll beat the fuck out you. Walk away, white boy. Walk away, pussy boy. God damn, Miles, turn the fuck up, bro. Let's get into this Drake and Kendrick shit. <laughs> God damn. Drake and Kendrick Lamar hate each other. Well, at least one of them hates the other person, while the other has tried many times to be friendly and squash things. One rapper seemed to believe that they were actually friends, while the other looked at their relationship as a business transaction. After two weeks of research, it's safe to say that one MC has lost every ounce of respect for the other. You guys really liked my last video where I broke down all the subliminal disses from Drake's new album, so I decided to stick with a similar style. And in my last video, I, I asked you guys to hit the like button, which is something I don't usually do, but the video did really well, and I don't know if that's why, but just do me a favor and hit that like button again. Thanks. So when it comes to Kendrick and Drake, they weren't always on bad term please tap a like on this joint that'll help out a lot back in 2011 drake had already blown up and kendrick had yet to release a major debut album now kendrick was definitely buzzing but he was far from the star that drake was even back in 2009 kendrick mentioned drake on a track where he pretty much admits that he thinks he's better i'll say i like a shot Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. This is down. We, we going down a rabbit hole. So I'm going to be breaking down things that catch my attention. Me and my girl split a bucket of KFC. She listening to Drake. And now, like I say, it's down. These niggas that much better than me. Baby. <clears throat> I mean, just that, that, those lines right there. What I would take away from it is he was at that time acknowledging that Drake was ahead of him in his career, 
but on a talent level he was questioning like wow hold on now is these niggas that good like because i'm cold I, I mean i know i'm nice hey are they that like is this nigga that much better like question it but he's still acknowledging that drake was ahead of him at this point in time so i don't really think that's like mm -hmm. i wouldn't feel too much away about that if i'm drake i'm hearing this shit i'll be like mm, all right now watch it bitch. you know what i'm saying i don't know i wouldn't feel no way but i definitely be on something like mm, okay watch it because you trying to compete <laughs> i mean it's obviously just these two lines It, it it shows Kendrick was trying to compare herself to Drake back then. So hey, I don't know how long now. There was a time when elegant estates welcomed works of art to us closer and closer. So Kendrick identified really early on that the mainstream hip hop wasn't really his thing. However, on June 16, 2011, Kendrick performed in Toronto for the very first time, and when Drake found out he was in the city. He decided to hit him up so that they could meet. I need y'all to know it's my first one, one time I meet you, And Kendrick would speak about meeting Drake in a double XL magazine and said, That's a real good dude. He got a real genuine soul. We clicked immediately. And it was during that meeting that Kendrick provided Drake with a copy of his unreleased album, Section 80. Visions of Martin Luther staring at me. Kendrick said that Drake was the first person outside of his team to hear Section 80 and that Drake was blown away by the project. I even found a 2011 tweet where Drake posted Kendrick's lyrics from ADHD. We never do listen unless it comes with that away. Drake liked Kendrick's music so much that he asked him to be on his upcoming sophomore album, Take Care. Throughout the track, Kendrick talks about meeting Drake for the first time and how he was surprised that Drake wasn't fake like most of the music business. Hit me on the sailor, thought he was gonna send me a fast word like the rappers I know. Kendrick outlines how Drake showed him a taste. So how the fuck do we get here? I'm sorry, I'm jumping a gun, but I'm already in my head like, damn, how do we get here? How do we get where we are today? Of what being rich and famous actually looked like. Sat down with a few drinks located where you can't see us. A white waitress on standby when we need a on the track, Kendrick really battles with the idea of becoming famous as he's worried that it will change him for the worse. Mm. Damn, this next level that I'm going to, will I get caught up in the Why I ice? <laughs> this is my about the dark, right? You know what I'm saying? My about the dark, right? We're going down the rabbit hole, right? But that's respectable. That's very, very, very respectable, but when celebrities or famous people say things like that it stands out to me because that's the very 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 reason why i move how i move in the sense of how about how i go about my talent my art shit, internet clout chasing and all that shit. it's like I believe in myself to the point that I know I can do exactly what I want to do whenever I get ready to do it and take it as far as I want to go. The only thing that I'm not sure or not clear of is the person that I would become if I was to just go all in in whatever direction that I choose. Man, like, and then maybe I just need to say that old skin and the old train of thought and my old thinking. Maybe I just need to get over that shit and get out of my own way. But man, it's something about being overly successful that scares the shit out of me. I have people act weird do one thing say another switch up be shady phony fake and i deal with enough snakes on the level where i am right where i'm at I always constantly surrounded by snakes <laughs> to the point where it's getting kind of hard to move in these rooms full of vultures boy it's too many but even still where i'm at I find myself uncomfortable with the people who's around. So that's the only thing about 
being super successful and taking it to that next level that scares the shit out of me. If I don't like the people who be around me now, nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> I might fuck around and hate, you know what I'm saying? I, I just be scared of a different level or the next level of success may either change me for the worse or change how I view people and damn you know what I'm saying I'm on my last string of holding on faith for humanity right now dog I'm really on my last string so that like that 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 really be a heavy deep cerebral thing cerebral thing with me when it comes to success man I want the paper I want the wealth I want to be able to you know what I'm saying do whatever I want to whenever I want to do it I want the financial freedom I want nigga I want I, yeah, I want everything that come with it but the people bro the people the people the people the mm. I'm just scared of the weirdos and the people and how I may react in that company. I might fuck around, lose my cool, crash out, or lose every goddamn thing. That's a strong possibility. So, yeah, man. I hate it. I, I, I ain't mean to stretch it and go that deep and go that far into it, but that line said a lot coming from him. Like, Jesus, that line said a lot. Kind of want to hear it again. On the track, Kendrick really battles with the idea of becoming famous as he's worried that it will change him for the worse. Mm. Damn, this next level that I'm going to, will I get caught up in the lifestyle and would that make me a break? And that was what the whole record was about when I did the interlude. And I mean, even back then, we could see the difference in these two artists where Drake is talking about the Maybachs and his lavish life. And Kendrick is worried about his mental health and his, you know, his relationships, his friendships. It's interesting because just two or three years later, the dude did get depressed from just being in the industry. I didn't know you were suffering from depression the way mm. you said you was on the album. Like, yeah. did, did the industry call that? Not, not the industry, just the change. And Drake only continues to show Kendrick more love by taking him and ASAP Rocky on his Club Paradise tour. This is my brother ASAP Rocky. This is my brother Kendrick Lamar. I'm on his Club Paradise tour, matter of fact, my nigga Drake. Look at that smile, boy. Genuinely happy, G. So is it the money? Is it the people that surround these artists, or is it women? It's, it's, it's one of the three, man. It's always one of the three. When you see cats fall out, it's either gonna be the people that surround them. Ah, uh, man, why you got that bitch ass nigga? Da -da 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 -da. Man, that nigga fake. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. You don't feel like that about this person, but the people like around you feel away. The money. One artist eating more than the next. Nigga pocket watching. God damn. You know what I'm saying? Shit, why the fuck you getting all this? I'm that. Da -da 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 -da. That money a motherfucker. That money a motherfucker. Oh, women. Women. Bro, you add women to the equation. Mm. For lack of better words. Ah, yeah. I got a better. I got something for it. Beta males. Beta males. A bitch ass niggas. When you put women around beta males or bitch niggas that don't get attention from women, they get weird. They get really, really fucking weird. They start doing things they wouldn't normally do. You know what I mean? They start acting in ways that they wouldn't normally act. When you introduce women to the mix and they not used to getting attention from women. I can almost guarantee you a man, a, a man who's not the most secure within himself, confident, or, you know what I mean, I would say it's comfortable around being around women period beautiful whatever the case may be bitch niggas and better males bro they can't handle it they feel the need to peacock show off 
uh, talk down on the next man. Next man ain't thinking about him at all. With these bitch niggas, you know what I'm saying? When you put either money, women, and, and what the fuck else I said? Something else. <laughs> or a group of bitch ass niggas around chirping, talking, getting in the nigga head. It's like the people that be around this bitch nigga. He ain't got a strong sense of self or he ain't got his own mind. Usually gonna call for a usually call for a fallout. So in between Drake and Kendrick, I just wonder which one of the three is it? Is it is it the camps? Is it crews around each other? Is it money or is it or is it a one? I, I would love to know which one of the three. And who the bitch nigga for making like who the bitch nigga for allowing how they feel for the next man to be changed. If you genuinely rock with a nigga from the beginning. And look, or 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 motherfuckers was just jealous from the dump. Nigga just ain't fuck with him from the dump. And he like, oh hell shit. Man, Drake fucking with me. Why not? You know what I'm saying? That shit weird, bro. TDE hot power in this you know. And Drake has always claimed to have fought with management to take these guys on tour because his label had other plans. You know, it's people I can put on here that the label wants me to put on here, but I fight for this one reason, man. Like, I fight to promote what I love. You know what I'm saying? I, I fight to promote the music that I truly love, so. Drake would mention this again in 2016 on his track 4 p.m. in Calabasas. When he told me take an R&B nigga on the road, and I told him no and drew for Kendrick and Rocky. However, Kendrick's superstardom quickly catches up with Drake, as a year later, he dropped one of the best hip-hop albums of all time, Good Kid, Mad City. Mm. I used to be jealous of him to find no. He was the one to find no. And Black Boy Fly is a, a bonus track, but to me, that's one of the, the most beautiful songs on that album. Absolutely amazing storytelling. And it was on that album where Drake returns the favor and gives Kendrick a feature on Poetic Justice. I really hope you play this, cause oh girl, you test my patience. And on the day that the album dropped, Drake even posted a tweet saying, Congratulations to Kendrick, incredible body of work, honored to be a part of it. However, even at this point, Kendrick and Drake couldn't be more different in terms of how they approach music and life in general. Really money really don't make me, I'm learning that now. You know, that's not really my um, my peace of mind, having money. I love Alexa Chung's shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> you love the shoulders? Right. I just love her shoulders. She's you actually are. blushing as well. She's no doubt about it, they're just two different guys. Next, right. we get a bit of an inside look on how Kendrick actually sees Drake as a person when the legend himself, DMX, claims that he would love to beat Drake up. <laughs> I wish it was like maybe seven years ago, well, maybe like like 10 years ago, well, you know, catch a to beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> and just a few. Yo, Bursky, what did it do, bro? What's up, bro? Days later, Kendrick was asked about his thoughts on DMX's rant, and he thought it was hilarious, saying that his entire tour boss nearly died of laughter. I wonder why these niggas in the front of the bus just cracking up, like hitting walls and shit, just crying. I'm like, what the fuck you niggas talking about? They mute, they stop laughing, right? I just hear X going off on a laptop. <laughs> Now remember, Drake is pretty sensitive, so if, if he did see that, he probably felt a way of him. So the two would work together for the very last time on one of 2013's biggest hits, ASAP Rocky's Problems. Dang. Man, fuck it. You won't start with who you finish with all the time. That's just all it is to it, G. You won't start with who you finish with all the time, man. And... I think as soon as people realize that shit and, and, and can accept it, we'll stop seeing all this fake click up shit. Like, motherfuckers won't be clicking up like that. You would just see shit would just be genuine from the jump. Shit would just be what it is. But I'm so sick of this clout, this clout chasing era it in a hole in itself. Trolling in this clout chasing shit is acceptable now. It wasn't even five years ago, motherfuckers would look at you crazy. It, I swear to God, bro, it, wasn't, it was less than five years ago. People look at you crazy. Trolling, clout chasing. You get outcasted. Now it's socially acceptable. And I can't wait for this fucking era to be over with. I cannot wait, dog.
that was it. After that, you never see these two on a track together again. In 2013, things started to get a lot more competitive between the two, because at this point, Kendrick was not just an up-and-comer, he had become that guy. You get a lot of accolades from your peers and hip-hop icons. Thank you, thank you. I love Kendrick Lamar. Number one on that list, Kendrick Lamar, what's up? The, the, the hip-hop savior, it seems like. Woo. And let's not forget, Drake is still Drake. He had a phenomenal year also. Shout out to Hamilton. Shout out to Toronto one time. Like, the best <laughs> rap album goes, and they said take care. Oh my God. <laughs> Given the success of both artists, the media and fans started to debate who was better, and Kendrick started off the year with a bang when he was awarded MTV's hottest MC in hip hop. Yeah, we went through about 15 of them, narrowed uh -huh. it down to 10. The 10 became five, the five became two. And you, Kendrick Lamar, are the hottest MC in the game, according to the MTV brain. And most of Kendrick's hip hop friends seem to be happy for him. I heard you're not happy about that. Nah, I wasn't until I found out who's number one. They made my man number one, K. One thing I do appreciate about this beef, this beef in between Drake, Kendrick, J. Cole, all this shit, it's gonna cause a much needed conversation that hasn't been had yet. But seeing we've seen, we can all say we done seen these guys from the beginning of their from their motherfucking double XL freshman covers up until where they are now. ASAP Rocky, he dropped every now and again, not as active as this was as he was, but shit, fat to say he done did his thing with his shit. Kendrick pop up when he feel like it. Put these rap niggas in the headlock, keep it moving. Drake been running it and holding it for the longest to where now he's considered to be that guy respectfully. And we've seen all that happen from the beginning. Like, we seen it from the beginning. J. Cole, he came, backpack kid. Oh, I want to be the Jay. He wanted to be the Jay Z understudy. He got in. Motherfucking felt like his style and. His talent would have been better suited in the generation before or in the era before. But I done said all that to say we are seeing the end of an era in hip hop. Not a bad thing at all. It's just we don't live to see we don't live to see some shit. And if you've been watching for hip hop, if you've been following this shit like, man, um, I was born in 87. I was born in 87. So hip hop was a goddamn two, three year old baby when I was born. Like hip hop was a two or three year old. I like, I literally grew up with the genre of music from its infancy. And to me, I hold a club. I mean, I do. I, I I partake. I get a little. I get a little rap money. You know what I'm saying? I make some. Yeah, I get a. Shit. I I do pretty good. Is and hip hop has been really, really, really good to me. For what I've put into the game and what I've been able to, I got exactly what I done put into the goddamn game. If I put more, I will get more out of it. But. I grew up with hip hop from its infancy, lit, literally like a little baby boy, and you see the parents buy him a puppy. Like hip hop was my fucking puppy type shit. I grew up with this motherfucker, and I'm sitting here watching. I've seen so I've done seen errors, errors. I've seen motherfuckers come and go. You know what I mean? On and off, I be tapped in with the underground scene and everything. And what I can say about where we at with it right now, it's only the end of an era. Gonna be some new cats coming through. They finna fuck this shit up. It's gonna be new names, new faces. And the thing about this new era of hip hop, um, I think the people and the fans of hip hop, you gonna have to go find what you want. Cause this, this, the next shit, the next Drake, the next Kendrick Lamar, or the next motherfucker J. Cole or ASAP Rocky might not even ever sign a record deal. That motherfucker might be underground forever and really run up the bag that way. 
on the independent scene. And if they not putting that stuff out there, you ain't gonna never know who that motherfucker is. Like, it's, it's, it's gonna be a brand new era. I'm seeing the new faces starting to poke out now. I see, I see these little, you, I see these young niggas coming. It's a couple of them coming 100 miles per hour. No, I mean, I haven't, damn, fucking nose running. I ain't seen, I've seen a ton of guys who make really good music that sound good. Like, I done seen a whole bunch of guys that make some shit that sound good. Now, they probably just ain't came across my desk yet or I ain't found them yet. But who's at the head of the game right now in the mainstream? They'll be straight for a while. These boys, like, they'll be straight for a while. But it's still time for it. It's time for It's just time for some new shit, man. But what I will say, the conversation that this beat, the, the beef in between Kendrick, Drake, and all these, this beef that they having right now, it could start a conversation in hip hop like well okay let's have a top three in every generation then and who had the best top three and that's the conversation that i'm dying for who had the best big three generationally through hip hop know what i'm saying was it was it the wayne t.i.g's era that's three niggas from the south had this shit sold up couldn't nobody else breathe type shit like Matter of, nah, shit, we had, or was it the group era? You know what I'm saying? Like, nah. Was it, was it that, was it the Nas, Jay-Z, whole big three? And Wayne T.I.G., that's on some South type shit. Like, we can go through every generation in hip hop, definitively make a big three, and then see who had the best big three from every generation and this the convers like that's the conversation that this back and forth in between these guys is gonna make because all you hear now that big three big three big me big three big me big three big me well eventually we're gonna have to look back in the history and who was the big three in the 90s mid 90s late 90s who were the big three in the early 2000s 2010s now we in the 2020s you know what i'm saying who is the big three from the 90s to where we at now we can go through every motherfucking generation to come with a big three and make a bracket and and do that shit tournament style like that's the conversation that i'm dead excited for i can't wait to see how that play out and i also feel like it's gonna happen soon but just remember you heard it here first we're gonna start breaking hip hop down into errors, weight classes, and all that. It's a sport at the end of the day, but I think this shit gonna be so fire, dog. M J Z Nelly had shit sold up, and that may be we may have to do this shit on a five period on a five year run. You know what I'm saying? Cause just just like. We got the 91 Bulls, the 92 Bulls, the, you know what I'm saying? The 95 Bulls, the 96, the 97, the 98, you know what I mean? We're going to have to break hardcore hip-hop fans of the bigger platforms and all that. We got, we really could break that shit down like that. You know what I mean? Healthy conversation, dope than a motherfucker. And you damn right, Nelly was a part of a big three. He, he had... Nelly was definitely a part of somebody's big three. If it went for a whole generation or an era, he had a year. Goddamn. <laughs> Motherfucker be like, shit, nigga, that goddamn, what, what? That 0 2 Nelly was a fuck, nigga. Who was fucking with Nelly in 2002? 2002, 2001. When did that shit hiding here come out? When the fuck hiding here came, came out? I'm finna Google this shit right now. Hot in here. When did that shit come out? <clears throat> and two, oh my god! And it's scary. Like it's, I don't give myself a lot of credit for my hip hop knowledge, but nigga ain't nothing but a fucking walking iPod. Guess when Hot in Here dropped? 
2002. I told, I mean, I grew up with this shit, man. Like, <laughs> this shit was my best friend for a long time. Still to this day, hip hop is my best fucking friend, man. I love me some, I love me some, obviously, I love me some fucking music, dog. That shit dropped 2002, and I'm just spitballing that shit off the top of my head, but man. Nigga, Pimp Juice? Cuh. Oh my god. But nah. See, oh, okay. Nigga. Nigga. 50 came right after that. And who in the 50 big three? We got it, it what, what, what? Who would we put in that 50 big three when 50 first came versus to like him fizzling out? Cause that big three changed. It went from being like when 50 first came. I want to say it went from like, oh, I would have to think, of, I would have to think about it. Cause I don't want to get the, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing pretty good off the top of my head. I don't want to fuck up. But 50 was in a big three of his damn shit. Well, shit. If we if we would have to force the big three, because he would ex and nigga. As soon as motherfuckers were trying to blow up, 50 would get an ass up out of there. <laughs> 50 was getting rid of niggas. He, shit, 50 was a, he was the big me in his big three. But damn. 50, J, and Ja. That damn show sure was the big three. That was the big three for a grip. You dead ass right. And my mind going, my mind going blank because a lot of this shit, like you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm in my mind, motherfucker, time traveling, nigga. I'm, I'm going all the way back, like. But damn, Bursky, that's it, like my motherfucker, that's it, nigga. Died, motherfucker, died fifty in hoes. And it went from Jai fifty in hoes to like. More 50 Wayne and Ross type shit. Cause them boys end up like shit. 50 end up motherfucking X and J out. Hove end up falling to the back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Then the South got hot. South got pissed by hot. But 50 was still motherfucking 50. So yeah, that big three end up swapping out a little bit in that era. Jesus Christ, that's a fun ass conversation to have, dog. <laughs> that would be a fun ass conversation to have. I need to get where we're gonna tap in with these hip hop or uh, some more hip hop enthusiasts, enthusiasts niggas. We got these conversations. My money over Bitcoin. Hell yeah, money still money. Bitcoin a fool. Bitcoin a fool. But if you ask me what I'd rather have right now, today, just right now, today, million dollars cash, million dollars worth of Bitcoin, nigga, hey, I, yeah, cash still came today. That Bitcoin a fool, though. <laughs> that boy was a close second. <laughs> that, yeah. Not hell, not nah, money over bitches. I had a uh, red that C, and that's how people be been a breathing on um, Bitcoin here lately. I see what you said though, money over bitches all day, but I'm like, shit, I'm in my head like, damn, I'm thinking finances type shit. So I'm straight with that. However, Drake was one person that certainly did not send any sort of congratulations to Kendrick. What about your rap peers? Did they call? I, I know it's kind of competitive, so did they say congratulations? My rap peers? Um, he cold. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. And I mean, at this point, Drake's at least got to be thinking, like, this guy's starting to become a problem. Oh, I'm trying to get Diana rent. Diane, these folk about stressed me out today. Just about, I took a nap on that motherfucking ass. Though. I said, you know what, I ain't getting all the way mad today. <laughs> I'm not letting nobody make me mad today. That about stressed me out today, Diane. Motherfucker. I said, no, I will not. I got me something to eat and went to sleep. Said, fuck it, we finna start this shit over. Try it again, boy. Why I can't control this drunk? Oh, 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 cause I'm, um, I'm signed in on Uncut. So I gotta get Diana Ranch. Hold on. I gotta do it on Google.
like my dead bite little when I touch it, put my dick count on the rest. Mm, 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 mm. Look at all. Dang it, kid. Mm, 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 mm. Alright, hold on. Get down rich, I went blank. Ain't you cool to bring your brother here? Yeah, I know what I said. I'm standing that shit. We ain't got to drag it. Seen so many switch up, transforming in traffic. If it's all that, they can have it. All with a real numb and established My body so still attached. Walking that bitch and I spit with a passion. Oh, 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 oh. This is one of my favorite beats, man. I destroyed this beat. Hold on, we're gonna let this shit breathe for a little bit before we get back in there. Just start feeling that jump, boy. I did my thing on that bit, right? I did, I did my shit on him. He's, he's getting a little bit close now. And Kendrick's winning streak was just beginning, as two months later, he cleaned up at the 2013 BET Awards, winning the best male hip hop artist over Drake. I came up Ooh. in the same county building, food stamps, welfare, section eight. And this time, I did find a tweet from Drake where he congratulates Kendrick on the win. Congrats to Kendrick as well. Nothing was the same. Come to think All about I said, it. Things were about to Come to think about it. Fucking 50. Yay and Wayne had a big three year. 50 Yay and Wayne definitely had their big three year together. Oh Jesus Christ. I can't wait. I can't wait to the fucking I can't wait. They start having this big three conversation throughout the eras of hip hop. That shit's gonna be Fire dog. Change. August 12th, 2013 was a special moment for hip hop. To this day, it still stands. <laughs> Invest in lithium. I've been watching lithium, ETH, XRP, and she. I'm already. I already got a little doge money. I be watching them for cryptos. But now, I'm going to tell you what I've been looking for. New IPs. I've been looking for brand new IPs, fresh out the drunk, fresh out the market. Hey, nigga, we just started today. <laughs> we just started. I've been looking for brand new IPs, man. Get in on the bottom flow soon as it start, like day one. You never know what's gonna be the next Google, Amazon, Apple type. You know what's gonna be the next Nvidia. Lord, I've been trying, to, man. I've been trying to get in day one, like so. That's that's something that a little I'm talking about the financing and investing and shit. Yeah, I just been I've been trying to keep track of new IPs launching. <laughs> Bird, hey, Fizzle, what's up with you, boy? Hey, Fizzle, nigga, you the nigga. Hey, you the nigga. We need. Hey, you the nigga. I need. I'm gonna go ahead and start it, cause I know if I sit there and wait on other hip hop platforms to do it. And I don't do it first day and I'm be mad knowing I'm I got this dope ass idea. But bro, G Fish, this is what we gotta do. We gotta come up for the big threes in hip hop in all in all eras though. Like and I say what we'll go back let's just go back to the first original big three. Who's the best MCs? Biggie, Jay Z and Nas. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that, to my knowledge now, that, to my knowledge, that's the, that's, that's one of the first times it, it was a debate, like, ooh, who the best in Big Three and all that shit. So if we start from early 90s, if we start from, yeah, if we start from the early 90s in hip hop and track that shit all the way up to now, I think it would be a dope ass video and a million views easy it's, it would be a million views hip hop big threes from this year to now and if we can like come up 
with a legitimate list of the uh, hip hop big three rappers for every year 91, 92, uh, you know what I'm saying, for the significant years, whatever, whenever these big threes change from one to the next, if we could like break that shit down, man, and, 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 and document that, that shit'll be hard, dog. That'll be hard as fuck. I need to get out my homework and pull my pencil and my paper out and just do it. I be coming up with the best ideas ever sometimes. I just don't be having an idea to execute these shits. Stands out as one of the most exciting things to happen in the last decade. On Big Sean's control, Kendrick let everyone in hip-hop know just how competitive he was when it came to that number one spot. The year 2024. These three icons come together. Nigga, fuck the big three. You know what time it is and that goes for Jamaica, Big Crit Wale, Pusha D, Meek Mills, ASAP Rocky, Drake, <laughs> Big Sean, J Electron, Tyler MacMillan. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to I always thought he shouldn't have said I got love for y'all. He should have just put some melts in there and, and, and went with I'm trying to murder all you niggas. I can see it. I ain't, what's, the, what's the sense of having love for a nigga you trying to murder? I, I never liked that part of the control verse. Make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. They don't want to hear that one more now no verb from you niggas. And we could really, really use a moment like that. And that line right there kind of made me feel like that nigga... Just a, you just a salty ass nigga now. You just a jealous ass nigga over there. So you just hating on everybody who got some motion, huh? Like everybody was looking at the control verse, like, oh, that nigga Kendrick Rough, man. That nigga Kyle, niggas. I was looking at that nigga like, but you over there jealous as hell, little boy. Why you jealous of these nigga, bro? But I guess I was the only way that I'm. I guess literally I'm the only person that viewed it like that. Unless your name will mention, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He dropped your name in that motherfucker. Then you probably think like how I'm thinking. He ain't say my name, and I'm still looking at it like, damn, why you jealous of these niggas? I always felt like that from the control verse. And I only felt like that because I'm like, damn, bro, you cold. Like, you are nice. You damn near rap better than fucking 90% of them niggas put together. So why the fuck? Like, I don't know. It came off on some hater type shit to me, but everybody else was like, ah, oh, Kendrick, oh. Right now in hip-hop. It's rain like it's Mayweather, good music, yay weather, champagne just tastes better. And let's just give it up for Big Sean, because to me, he had one of his career best verses, but it just got overshadowed because of Kendrick's verse. I said, fuck trying and not doing, cause not doing is something a nigga not doing. I grew up the in big and pop bitch and got ruined, so until I got the same crib, big head in that juicy vid, bitch, I can't mother... Stop moving. But when it came to Kendrick's verse, nobody that he mentioned had a problem with it. K Dot and them niggas, that's fam, yo. I think hip hop need this shit, man. You know. You know, I've been I knew what it was for hip hop culture. I knew how important it was. He said my name. Like you said, my name said my a couple people's name and he said he's the best rapper. I say I'm the best rapper every song I'm on. Oh. Yeah, but he wasn't coming at him in a disrespectful way, he's coming at him in a competitive way. So for me it's one of those things where I appreciate it. I didn't take it necessarily as this. Hip hop is competitive, but I am a competitor. Wait, sorry. Nobody had a problem except for Drake. I just like, I don't know, it, it just wasn't real to me. It's like, <laughs> I, I saw him. Drake out. said, fuck that shit. Drake said, fuck that shit. Everybody on that motherfucker, oh, <laughs> oh it's cool, oh, it's just hip hop. Drake said, man, fuck that shit. That nigga fake say him. <laughs> and people be wondering why I fuck with Drake, cuz. Huh? That nigga Drake. That nigga Kendrick motherfucker apologize for that nigga talking about, oh man, you know what I'm saying? Kendrick, one of the best rappers out. Man, on this new disc, guess what Drake said? J. Cole, you shut the fuck up. That shit was whack, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love Drake, bro. I'm telling you. That nigga said, fuck that shit. That shit phony as fuck, nigga. I'll do you, I'll do all the rap, nigga. Oh, yeah, hip hop, da, 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 da. which. They're telling the truth. It was good for hip hop. Good for the conversation. Good to bring eyes and attention on the hip hop genre itself. Motherfuckers get to pushing that pen, start rapping. Yeah, like yeah. They were in line, but shit, nigga. To be totally honest with you, out of everybody, I feel more like Drake. <laughs> Burski, out of everybody, I feel like Drake. Nigga, fuck that shit. That shit was fake. Like in this, I what I just, I had just said the same shit, nigga. I did that, just said the same shit. I'm like, damn, this nigga ain't even diss me, but I feel like, boy, you want some hating ass shit. 
Drake said, man, fuck that nigga, man. <laughs> That's why I like Drake, bro. Drake ain't scared. Let a nigga know him. He's scared. Either way. And in turn, it be forcing motherfuckers to fake kick it with him and be fake cool with him because they know Drake will goddamn get on their ass. Like, bro, you need to know. You, leave, leave, the fucking, leave the light skinned dude alone at this point, man. Leave the boy alone at this point, dog. That's how I really feel about it. Honestly. <laughs> that motherfucking Drake, man. I said, fuck that nigga, bro. That nigga, fight, boy, he's fake, man. After that, and it was just like love. So it's like, was that real or was that just like for the people? You know what no, I mean? I like, think it's a sparring kind of sport. Yeah, but you know, at the same that. time, it's like, you know, yeah. then let it be real then, you know? I mean, because those were fuck all that. The harsh words, right? So it's like, don't just, you can't just say that and then see me and be like, yeah, man, what's up? Pretending like nothing ever happened. Like, that's not real. And this right here is a perfectly good example of why people call Drake soft and emotional. You can't act this way. No, it ain't. No. That's the only part that I don't understand, man. How am I soft and emotional? Because I don't like when niggas doing fake shit. How am I? How was something wrong with me? Because I won't be fake. Which I see motherfuckers. I see people talk cash money shit about a man. Or talk, try to talk to me about somebody that they got issues with or got problems with. And then I see them clicked up kicking it with a nigga. They look fake as... I don't... That's fake as fuck to me. I be looking at... Look at them with your fake ass. That's the first thing come to my mind. That's why I don't do it. Motherfuckers be fake and, and cool with being fake. <laughs> I don't look at that fake ass. Jeez, uh, it's so much of that going on. But then, they'll call Drake soft or sensitive because he's standing on, oh, nah. You doing lame shit. I'm I'm letting you know that shit lame shit. I don't like that. I don't know. Don't fuck with, I don't fuck with lame nigga. Get your lame ass away from me. Drake will tell him like, yeah, boy, like, Drake, you can't, you can't, I mean, if it's love, be love, but goddamn, that nigga, you, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna see Drake fake kicking it. Now, if they don't like his motherfucking ass after the fact, <laughs> that's a whole different story. But shit, fuck that. Hell no, nah, nigga, you talk shit about me, I find out. It ain't no motherfucking cool, it ain't no fake kicking, it ain't no talk, bitch, do something. <laughs> Fuck okay. that. And then sit back and wonder why people are labeling you as such. Like this is this is why. And it's interesting because when Drake came into the game, he seemed to understand that competition came with the genre. It's, mm. it's a great thing though to be competitive with those guys because you're always pushing yourself. I mean, and look, Drake was not a rapper that you could just push around. He did go toe to toe with people before. Back in the day, a Toronto rapper by the name of Aristo seriously tried to end Drake's career, and it didn't end well for this guy. Here's one thing you need Damn, to do before you buy anything online. Don't spend another dime. Now, that's something I ain't know, boy. Drake came in on some player shit. That comeback season was hard. Comeback season was hard as fuck. It was like rap R&B. <laughs> uh, R&B for rap niggas. You know what I'm saying? That shit, Drake was I'm on Amazon. R&B for niggas who was too goddamn... Hip hop to just full on listen to R and B. That nigga kind of like bridge the gap, and and and, you know what I'm saying? Cause me for the longest, yeah, for me for the longest, I wasn't an R and B nigga at all. I I like the songs that I like. It's, yeah, a couple of songs, word up. Yeah, them nigga be singing. I ain't, I don't be trying to hit no nigga sing all goddamn day though. That ain't that wasn't never my shit. So oh, hell yeah. I'm finishing it in here. If I copy button flow, you mimicking his career. It was good riddance. It was lights out. It was a body. <laughs> and that's what it was, man. And that's why good riddance. And, it, and what happened? Good riddance, right? Bye. I remember when this dropped because it was all over the hip hop blogs in Canada. And yeah, we did have hip hop blogs in Canada in 2009. They did exist. With all that said, Drake dropped nothing was the same. And we get to hear the first subliminal shot for Kendrick. On the track titled The Language, Drake immediately starts out with a shot. I don't know why they've been lying, but your shit is not that inspiring. <laughs> so when Kendrick's control verse dropped, Drake stated on multiple occasions that he did not find the verse impressive, that he thought it was for shock value, and that it would soon be forgotten. But it was it was real cool for like, you know, a couple weeks. 
But like, if I ask you, for example, like, how does that verse start? <laughs> One of Drake's more notable claims was that Kendrick had a great first album, but he questioned whether or not he could do it again. And as far as Kendrick goes, like, I can't wait to see what he does because now it's time to show and prove. And, and consistency, is, it's been one album. Consistency is like, you need more than one album, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's time to show and prove. And Drake claimed that he was all about putting out memorable bodies of work as opposed to creating moments. When it comes to competition, I'm just, I'm, I'm more worried about consistency. I'm more worried about bodies of work. However, Drake continues to send some more shots. <laughs> Any nigga that's talking that shit just to get a reaction. Again, Drake refers to Kendrick as someone that wrote the control verse to get attention. I am the kid with the motor mouth. I am the one you should worry about. A motor mouth is defined as a person who talks quickly and continuously, often without considering what they're saying. In mm. this case, someone that raps fast. <laughs> is clearly about Kendrick. Talking that shit with your back to me, just know it always get back to me. So outside of the DMX comment, there were some other interviews where Kendrick had laughed at Drake's expense. I heard about you touring with Drake. Yeah. I was like, that's dope, that's dope. And I was like, well, I hope he doesn't hang with Drake too hard because yeah. Drake isn't exactly doing what we thought he would, what many of nerdy backpackers like myself thought he might be doing a few years ago. Right. And honestly, man, at this point, I would not be one bit surprised if Kendrick said something behind Drake's back and it got back to him. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. At the 2013 BET Hip Hop Awards, Hendrick decided to throw some gas on the fire. He went into the awards with oh, the Oh yeah, I put that shit on mute, so I wanted to make sure I heard that shit out of the way clear. Talk behind niggas back, man. What is up with you bitch ass niggas? What is up with you bitch ass niggas, bro? It'll be, the world be a better place without you motherfuckers, bro. <laughs> For real, stop talking behind. Stop doing that. Most nominations at 14, and Drake was a very close second with 13. Miss Chicago, give me a hug. Kiss on it. All that. Yo, give me some love. Give me some love. Give me some love. Hey. <laughs> Miss Chicago, me and Drake been going through the same shit with these bitch ass niggas, man. Me and Drake been going through the same shit. It's crazy. That would talk behind his back, too. <laughs> However, Kendrick <laughs> would be the man to come out on top, winning Lyricist of the Year, MVP of the Year, Album of the Year, and Feature of the Year. Drake also came out with a handful of awards for Best Hip Hop Video, Track of the Year, and People's Champ. However, it would be Kendrick again that stole the show. Yeah, and nothing been the same since they dropped control and they took the sense of the rapper back in his pajama clothes. Ha ha, jokes on you, high five. I'm bulletproof, your shots are never penetrate. Pin a tail on a donkey, boy, you've been a fake. So, pretty self explanatory, Kendrick uses Drake's album title Nothing Was the Same to call him out for being sensitive regarding the control verse. And this whole thing got a lot of people excited, and just the very next day, Sway asked Kendrick if the bars were meant for Drake. Was, uh, mm. people want to know, was that directed towards Drake or anybody in, in particular? Mm. Huh? That was having fun as usual. Uh-huh. But Drake didn't... If I'm Drake, that'll make me call Kendrick a bitch-ass nigga. I'm sorry. You just having fun, huh? <laughs> All right, out of all the people that you you could have had fun with, you want to have fun with me. All right, word. Own it. Roger that copy. Not seem to think so, and just a few weeks later, he came with some more subliminal shots on a future track titled Shit. And that's the name of the song, Shit. But uh, I always like this record. Oh my god, I love these hip hop conversations. Tell me the hood like I'm from there. So you know it's all good when I come there. I hear you talk about your city like you're running there. Then I brought my tour to your city. You're my son there, nigga. And to me, this is one of the best subliminal shots of the whole saga. Like, Drake sounds. Uh, I forgot. Bro, I forgot. Future need to have a verse ASAP. Bro, Future, we. Damn, boy. You try to murder somebody in the verses and niggas don't even know. God, somebody. I need this one more time, though. I forgot all about that. That nigga slid on his own. Act titled Shit. And that's the name of the song, Shit. But, uh, I always like this record. So niggas out of hood like I'm from there. Shit. So you know it's all good when I come there. I hear talk about your city like you run there. Then I brought my tour to your city. You're my son there, nigga. And to me, this is one of the best subliminal shots of the whole saga. Like, Drake sounds like Jay-Z here. It's a very Hove-like thing to say where... 
he's just completely sunning Kendrick. So it's been known that Kendrick puts on heavy for the West Coast, claiming that he's the king, but Drake refers to him as his son because Kendrick went on his first big tour with Drake, and mm. of course they had some shows in California. At the time, even Kendrick admitted that he was not used to these large crowds. The transition of me doing uh, the, the 2,000 videos I've been doing back then is, is a little sketchy for me doing this 10,000. I gotta really work some magic. I even found a Kendrick tweet from 2012 when he was on tour with Drake where he says, Finally home, LA, Club Paradise, let's see what happens tonight. And if a nigga say my name, he the high shit. But if I say the nigga, let me say the high shit. So this one clearly a reference to Kendrick's control verse. Mm. A lot of MCs responded to Kendrick with a verse of their own. Drake is basically claiming that given the fact that he's a bigger artist, if he says Kendrick's name, he's just doing him a favor. And this next one's not even a diss. I just want to show you guys my favorite line from the song. You know, he just signed a deal with Jordan. Mike Will made the beat. Shit's fire. Come on. Oh, However, just a few days later, now, an issue of Vibe magazine I, was released, and Drake talks about Kendrick Bursky, again. Bursky, just on, on, on the kick talk, though. He snapped on the kick talk, man. I can't say that. I got 200. I'm over 200. Per, I, can, I can't say that. Damn. That's something snap. <laughs> that nigga said, I call Michael Jordan up and Mike will make it. Come on, man. Come on, man. That nigga got goddamn Nike ID controls with motherfucker Jordan. <laughs> he got the goddamn Jordan brand uh, Nike buy you plug, nigga. Fuck you mean, bro. Fuck you mean. Like, nigga, stop, stop, stop. We talking about the kick game, but that's, that's, come on now. That's flexing, nigga. Out that you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, if for one, how you gonna beat, how you gonna beat that nigga? That nigga said, I called Jordan up and Mike Will made it. That nigga damn so had them over yo. That nigga had them over yo. Oh, he had them over yo, Jays. The over yo, Jays was an era. There was a fucking time. I don't have one over yo, Jordan, bro. And I damn sure wasn't finna buy the cheapest pair just so I can say I had a fucking OVO pair of drawers. I ain't no, I ain't no hype be so. I had to wear the L's in that era, man. Damn, whole bunch of L's. I, I still to this day, I will take them motherfucking um, them white wear like them cream to sell OVO twelves. Oh my god, them OVO twelves was so raw. Ah, with that, that white with that stingray on them ho. Them bitches was nice. And them Kentucky 8s. Jesus. Them hoes ain't even dropped like that. But still, nigga, when I seen them Kentucky 8s. Bit. Yeah, I did have the, we had the, we had the poor man OVOs. We had the poor man OVOs. NYC 10s, them, I called them the Smitties though. They got NYC on it. That, that you know what I'm saying? Them the New Yorks, man. We done the New Yorks, man, but Oh my god, bro. Do y'all remember that over your era, bro? That's something said I call Michael Jordan up and Mike will make it, bitch. What? Ugh. Oh you bitch, that's hard. That's fucking hard. I'm sorry, that's that's raw. Doing him a favor. And this next one's not even a diss. I just want to show you guys my favorite line from the song. You know, he just signed a deal with Jordan. Mike Will made the beat. I respect this young man ill for music. I respect his opinion. I respect his takes on music because he, he's pointing out the right shit. That's the right shit to get excited for right there. This man... Yeah, we can you make sure you go ahead and subscribe. What's my guy name? Yeah. Yeah, I'm finna subscribe, nigga, right now, bro. What's the dirt with a question mark? What's the dirt? This man know what the fuck he talking about. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'd rather listen to him break down music for motherfucking uh shit. A lot of these people, yeah, he know what he talking about, boy. That's a cold ass fucking boy. He don't get no cleaner than that, nigga. 
Shit's fire. Come on. However, just <laughs> it a few is. days later, an April 5 magazine was released, and Drake talks about Kendrick again, stating how he didn't like how the control verse messed with the rollout of his album. Where it became an issue is that I was rolling out an album while that verse was still bubbling, so my album rollout became about this thing. Drake then continues to position himself as someone that is above anything that Kendrick has to say. He's hungry, so he's going to do what he has to do, like the BET cipher, but again, it's not enough for me to go. I have to realize I'm being baited, and I'm not going to fall. Jordan doesn't have to play pickup to prove that he can play ball. No offense. Now, at this point in the story, we're about to witness one of the biggest upsets in Grammy history. At the 56th annual Grammy Awards, Kendrick lost the hip-hop. Drake said, Kendrick, one of them niggas that be at motherfucking LA Fitness, nigga. He said, I ain't finna play pick up with you motherfuckers. I am a champion. <laughs> I'm a playoff player, nigga. Fuck you mean, nigga. I'm Hemi Butler in the playoffs, nigga. I don't play no fucking wreck ball with you niggas. Call that nigga Kendrick a wreck ball player, nigga. Cut. Pop album of the year to Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, and rightfully so, People were outraged. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. All you gotta do is look at Pharrell's face, because it says it all. <laughs> Andrea listening don't know nothing about sneakers nor rap. Okay. Well, I'm like, okay. Boom. That's good. Damn, my nose keep running. I got a cold, man. Well, I ain't. I think I got a little sinus infection. This pollen kicking my ass. Uh, this pollen be coming out and kicking my ass. But, boom. Like, hip hop and sneaker culture get a really, really, really bad rap. You know what I'm saying? When I hear people talk about hip hop, they either talking about the violence or the, the you know what I'm saying, the treatment of women or the misogyny and all that hip hop. When you hear hip hop, that's what you hear first. And with the shoes, you always hear about, Stupid motherfuckers fighting over shoes. Oh, niggas love shoes and people robbing people for shoes. It's not many people that break down and uplift the art form within both that show you why people are excited about these things. And like guys like this, myself, and there's plenty others that, you know what I mean? I just feel like both hip hop and sneakers get a bad rap and if you on the outside looking in it just look like it looked like a bunch of crazy nigga shit or whatever the case may be but from this view and and from my you know what I'm saying from my focal point like it's art and I more or less get excited and, and show the appreciation from 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 the the the, the actual art form itself and break down the artistry within, you know what I'm saying, this culture. So it's definitely it 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 you know what I'm saying, it's a it's a expression type thing. It's a avenue and and a platform. Both, you know what I'm saying, fashion, sneakers and hip hop. It's it's all about self expression and you know what I'm saying, being yourself raw unapologetically being you and ain't always motherfucking shoot them up bang bang type shit like that's there it exists if that's what you looking for it's plenty of it but the hip hop that I love and the shit that get me cited is you know what I'm saying guys literally showcasing um they they mental they 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 mental creativity and 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 you know what i'm saying how sharp they are with the words I, i'm a person that love fucking words and i do believe words mean something they got definitions and how these guys play with their voice and words and turn themselves into an instrument and use these words and you know what i'm saying it's it's a art form it's a it's a beautiful science to it and that science and that art within that, that's that's what I love. You know what I'm saying? That's what I go crazy for. You know what I mean? So, hey, yeah, that's what... Pretty much, that's, that's why I'm drawn to it. And I grew up with hip-hop and being in love with fucking shoes and shit. Now, as an adult, I kind of... 
No, I mean, turned into a lifestyle for myself and shit. I get a little, I've been blessed enough to, you know what I mean, get a little change from both. Hell, yeah, so <laughs> that's what I'm into, man. I fucks with it. I just say if you don't know what's going on, get a chance. You might, you might like you go for you might find you an artist that like that that's speaking to your life. At Cox Mobile. Yeah, I might end up being one of the ones, or somebody else definitely would be. Why fucking knows going crazy. We know there's a better way to save. That's why we run on the network. I can't wait for spring, man. Every single day. <laughs> He's just trying to get off the stage as quickly as possible. Like why? Why did I'm really starting to think I ain't from here. I'm starting to think I ain't. every season that passed, I be like, oh, I can't wait to the next season. When it's winter. Can't wait for the spring. Oh, it's going to warm up. Soon the spring get here. The world start pollinating itself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This motherfucking world start pollinating itself and actually start growing and doing what it's supposed to do. Then it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, let's get let's get to the summer part. Then it get too goddamn hot. Ah, I can't wait for the fall. Then it's too dark and gloomy. You know what I'm saying? I can I can I don't, at this point. I don't think I'm from here because I don't even like now one of the seasons like that. They get me to do this. And Macklemore, feeling the heat, decided to text Kendrick afterwards and say that he felt he should have won and that he got robbed. And it would have been a nice gesture if he didn't take a screenshot of the text and post it on social media for everyone to see. And just a month later, Drake gave his two cents in a Rolling Stone interview. You won. Why are you posting your text message? Just chill. Take your W. And if you feel like you didn't deserve it, go Damn. get better. Make better music. It felt cheap. It didn't feel genuine. Why do that? Why feel guilt? You think those guys would pay homage to you if they won? To name just Kendrick? That shit made me feel funny. No, in that case, you robbed everybody. We all need text messages. Damn. You guys tell me, does Drake seem like he's defending Kendrick in this article? Mm. Or does it seem like he's salty because he's not in the mix? At this point, the feud dies down for about eight months. And Drake even had some very kind words for Kendrick at his OVO fest when he brought out Jake Cole. And while you all got your phones out, I want to shout out my nigga Kendrick Lamar. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick was on my album. We went on tour together. That's one of the hardest niggas alive right there. He's legendary, so shout out to him. He should be standing right there. However, it looks like Kendrick did not get the message as just two months later, he responds to Drake's Motormouth line on a J-Rock track titled Pay For It. I tell him all the hell King Kendrick resurrected my vengeance Been that your motor up till I break down the engine Clearly a response to Drake's subliminal on the language Again, Kendrick inserts himself as the king And he doesn't seem to think that Drake can go to distance with him And it will be just two weeks later where Kendrick gets asked about this alleged diss You know, a lot of rumors are with the Drake thing Like, you know, is, yeah. did you really bring the Drake thing? These motherfuckers been checking everything with each other They might as well go ahead Man, they, it's time for it now it's time for it. Now, these niggas been checking it. They been checking each other for a long time, dog. If anyone make, anyone make a false move, boom, quick shot. And it's been coming from both ends. These niggas been checking each other for, bro, might as well go ahead and hit, man. Fuck it. Might as well go ahead and hit, bro. Back with the with the J uh, Rock single or what's what, that about? What what what? what? I ain't hear the, the Drake feud. Or See, look at them going. Yeah. Look at them, damn man, no. you're disgusting. I think, that's, I think, <laughs> that's people digging in. That's people yeah. digging in way too far. Once again, we're all reaching, and it's it's not about Drake. And just a few days later, Kendrick would get asked about his now year old control verse, and this time he said that all the people that mattered understood it, and for the people who didn't, they don't matter. The people that respected, you know, was was you know people that knew the deal. Yeah. What's the important people? <laughs> that respect. That nigga said, knew the deal. The people that respect it, yeah, them nigga know. Them nigga know they can't fuck with a baby picture of me, man. <laughs> them nigga know they can't fuck with me, boy. Yeah, so, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Respect and knew what it was, and, and you know, people that don't respect it, obviously, they're just people that don't get it, and, and, you know, really didn't matter. And again, Kendrick claims that the chances of seeing him and Drake... A lot of quiet back and forth, too. And they checking everything, Bursky. <laughs> Bitch, move wrong. Nigga, what? <laughs> they been checking shit. They go head to head is slim to none because they're two different artists. It's just a whole nother dynamic. I can't see myself uh, going bar for bar with Drake. You know, we, we're two different type of artists. You, you know eat Drake. I've argued that. <laughs> and I honestly feel like this is just Kendrick downplaying Drake as not being on his level. 
I don't think he respects Drake. I don't think he really ever respected Drake. And there's some underlying meaning behind this when he keeps saying it. Would Drake be somebody you would like to have some fun with? Nah, I, I couldn't. We come from two different worlds, mm. two different backgrounds. I, I really don't see that uh, playing out, you know, as, as entertaining. Maybe to you know, the people. Oh, man. I don't think, dog, I don't. I think he just. I think he underestimating or not taking Drake serious. If he really feel, like, if that's how he really feel, I think he just underestimate. And I will give him, I do believe that he may have more lyrical ability. Maybe a tad bit sharper with them raps. I think he's a, he he has more lyrical ability and a tad bit sharper than Drake. As an overall artist, being a well-rounded artist and entertainer, like Drake was an entertainer before he was a rapper. So what Drake does really really well that people don't give him credit for is using that entertaining background on screen and that shit translate over in them bars real real good gets comedy show type tv entertainment type shit like just real sharp quick and witty word play drake a master with that shit bro and he know how to work the crowd he's a showman <laughs> The man, showmanship is out of this world. He's Drake for a fucking reason. He know how to work the crowd. So I think Kendrick definitely sleeping on the fact that Drake may be, I mean, he, he is who he is, bro. People like the people on him give, give him shit and talk shit about him, but the man is an entertainer. And that shit done translated over the music flawlessly, like, to where I can see Drake being done with music, getting back on TV, and motherfucking locking up motherfucking the TV screen, the big screen, the movie screens for a whole 10, 20 years. Like, being that guy that, I'm finna go watch this Drake movie or show. And people really be entertained. You know what I'm saying? Kendrick sleeping on that part. That nigga gotta take that shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, as far as just rap, rap, rap in the studio, talking this joint on the microphone, like, yeah, Kendrick, that's Kung Fu Kenny, man. Whoa! You know what I mean? That's, uh, boy, that's, that's Kendrick, boy. That's a bad man. It's a bad goddamn man down there. I can't take that. I cannot. I will never, ever, ever disrespect that man, penmanship, and what he do on that motherfucking microphone. Man, gotta give him credit and say, um... See, he will be carrying. Kendrick is definitely carrying his weight and a little bit more in his big three. Whatever big three Kendrick is in, if it's if it's Kendrick Cole and Drake, word. Drake, he there for a reason, of course. But Kendrick on a lyrical, just rap and hip hop type shit, Kendrick might be carrying the whole motherfucker group. But artistry, we got to think about it now. It's, you know what I'm saying? This is this, this is it. it. It get bigger than rap. It definitely get bigger than rap. So I don't know, man. Like Kendrick might be sleeping on that area. They, they, they gonna stop sleeping on that boy. They nigga drink a bad man, man. Drink cold blood, it could. Just because you can wrap circles around Ninja Turtles don't mean goddamn <laughs> you can fuck with uh, Stefan when that nigga hop out that booth and he ain't Urkel. You know what I'm saying? Type shit. Well, listening, you know, not for myself. Keep in mind, Kendrick was classified as the savior of hip hop. He was embraced by. Damn, that was bars. That nigga wrapping circles around Ninja Turtles. Mike can't fuck with Stefan when he turned into Urkel. When he turned from Urkel, though. I said, if we're a fight, but it's different. That's all I'm saying. 
everyone just for the art, whereas someone like Drake really had to go to distance to prove himself, and even then, he could never win over the fans that admired a certain level of Man, I'm, like, I'm gonna write that shit down. <laughs> that would do that bars, low-key. Many consider Drake to be a pop star, and I feel like Kendrick is saying this without really saying it. You can turn any slogan or funny quote into a professional design in just minutes with one tool. Making text-only designs, whether that's shirts or anything else. Just hold on, going home. However, next Drake drops his surprise mixtape, <laughs> if you're reading this is too late, and on that project, he had some more shots for Kendrick. They don't say your name on them airwaves, they gon' hit you up right after like a Sony rap. Mm. So, Drake had claimed previously that he saw Kendrick just five days after the control verse, and it was all love. I know that that verse had no malice behind it because I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. And at this time, Drake was a top- I ain't gonna fake. Rick Ross got me looking at his nose trying to see if I can notice a change. <laughs> and it, yeah, but we only seeing old pictures, but I'm, I'm, looking, I'm locked in on that motherfucking nose, though. Talk of the town because this surprise project made a big splash. So just a few weeks later, <clears throat> Kendrick decided to shake things up and finally dropped his long-awaited album by surprise as well. Uh, and when I wake up, I recognize you looking at me for the pay cut. But mm. I'm Naturally, fans and the media pitted the two albums against each other. Kendrick, bruh, how do you let Drake drop a mixtape that goes harder than your album? A freaking mixtape. Not gonna compare Drake and Kendrick anymore because they're not even playing the same sport right now. Kendrick is in his own league. And comparing these projects makes zero sense. It's apples to oranges. Drake's project was great for club DJs, gym playlists, cruising in the car. Whereas Kendrick's album touched on real world issues, was mm -hmm. chanted during protest, and is looked at today as one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. However, Drake wasn't done as he let another one go on the game's track 100. I would have all of your fans if I didn't go pop and I stayed on some conscious shit. Again, Damn. Kendrick had just released to Pimp a Butterfly, his most conscious album to date, and Drake is basically saying that he could do that style if he wanted, but he's on a different mission with his music. Also important to note, the video for this track was filmed in Compton. So Drake is saying all this while Daughter he Zion, what it do? <laughs> Competition. If they even play the competition, then I seen a response again. Now, the game hmm. was asked about this, and he didn't seem to think it was a shot at Kendrick, but he also didn't count it out. Drake was taking some little notes at Kendrick on that song, and Kendrick called in one return something. I think that would be great for hip hop. However, one of the worst things to be exposed for as a rapper was about to happen to Drake. On July 22nd, 2015, Meek Mill took to Twitter to expose Drake for having ghostwriters. 10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands, man. I can remember having a conversation with my little brother on mm. the phone and we were both saying like, there's no way. There's no way that Drake has ghostwriters because he's too good of a writer himself. It just doesn't make sense. I can believe he was definitely one of those people who was in that deep, damn near knockout drag down argument over this motherfucker shit. Like, <laughs> I think he done had plenty of arguments over rap before, bro. That shit get deep, bro. But boy, were we wrong. Okay, 10 bands. You got debate points. Man, that's what I'm saying, bro. Look, we locking in. We locking in. I'm, <laughs> we locking in. 50 bands, 100 bands. <coughs> did, you hear the, did you hear the reference tracks? Line for line. Word for word. This is bad. No, it's, a, it's a terrible time to be a Drake fan. Shortly after these tweets, the reference tracks would leak to support the Ghostwriter allegations. And now we get back to Kendrick, who just a few months earlier made reference to rappers with Ghostwriters on his single, King Kunta. When a rapper with a Ghostwriter, what the fuck happened? So basically, Kendrick found out about this ghostwriting shit months before we did, and months before it even got exposed. And Kendrick is basically saying, like, I know what you've been up to, buddy. I'm not gonna say anything, but I know. I told y'all. Man, you know what? I ain't gonna stress it. Let's go. With all that said, as everyone knows, Drake responded to Meek Mill with a now legendary diss record back to back. Back to back like I'm Jordan 96, 97, whoa. And being a day one Drake fan, for me personally, I was never more proud of Drake in his whole entire career than when he dropped back to back. The new record, uh, back to back, tough tune, tough, tough tune. But once again, Kendrick responds to Drake just one month later on Dr. Dre's Compton album. In this one, Kendrick references Drake's recent track, Enemies. Got enemies, got a lot of enemies. Kendrick is one. I think that was my favorite song on the album. At that point in time, nigga, I was going through it. 
on YouTube with uh I think I had just started beefing with uh skinny and Zay and them nigga. That was my shit, boy. Who I had played that song a hundred motherfucking times. Once again, talking about how Drake keeps going the subliminal route, which at the end of the day is really no different. <laughs> yup. When that shit came out, I had just got into it good with uh Drake with with uh I think I'm talking about Drake with uh skinny and Zay and them. Mashing that goddamn Drake. I was banging that bitch, boy. Tell me, I done seen myself in Drake too many times. From, from what he's doing, but he didn't stop there as he did it again on another song from the same album. They lied about to bury him, they nominated six to carry him. The beef is on his breath and hair and the drama better than the great white. Cause this is good for my aquarium. The words they nominated six to carry him could potentially be a Drake reference given the fact that Toronto is referred to as the six. And if this is the case, Kendrick no, is I ain't even know. The, no, 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 no. I'm dead ass wrong. It was another song. It went enemies. What the fuck song that was? It was that. Uh, it was that mob shit. It was that mob shit. It was when Drake first started talking that mob shit. Yeah, I ain't even know them niggas then. I lied. When Drake first started talking that mob shit, crazy. It might have been on that Scorpion album. When was that? When did um Drake Scorpion album drop? Cause I don't know what the fuck had happened. They had to piss that nigga off. <laughs> Drake started mobbing hard as hell. Coincidentally, I was rapping mob hard as shit on YouTube. So, hey, worked out of my favor. It was tough. <clears throat> what year was that? Twenty eighteen, yeah. Yeah. Basically saying that everyone seems to think that Drake is his greatest opponent, but that he's a great white and that twenty fifteen does right before YouTube. I was oh yeah, I was still I was underground rapping then. I was underground and local rapper then, hitting the beach doing little shows on the strip and shit. But I had just fell out. I had just fell out with somebody. Um, somebody I thought was close, and it was the same. It was literally the same shit, bro. I, I had, well, you know what I'm saying? It's over, with, and I don't think about the shit now. It's dead gone, stinking, but at that damn, at that point in time, somebody had a lot of respect for somebody I was real close to, and we was putting fucking game together, damn it, every day type shit. So I had came home. Hopped in the Xbox party, you know what I'm saying? Or we playing the game and shit. But I had uh somebody hit my phone. I had to leave. I left the game on. Left and came back. And by the time I had came back, it was just like everybody had left out the party. I was still there. He was still there. But he was on the motherfucking phone, drunk, talking to somebody. That man was talking crazy about me. It was like I heard somebody talking behind my back. And it was somebody that like I wouldn't believe that shit. I ain't know what I wouldn't mean if somebody could have would have told me somebody could have came to me right after they hung up the phone told me everything that nigga said and I would not have believed that shit just because of who it was if I hear it for myself so hell yeah I've been thinking about shit like that today like I don't know why I don't know why niggas do that shit dog that's just weak man if you don't fuck with a nigga leave him alone bro you ain't gotta be that's why I be so hard on fake kicking it and be so hard like on people being around if you don't really rock with it. Bro, just leave people the fuck alone. <laughs> I'm telling you, stop putting yourself on people right off. You ain't got no good intention for them folk. You know what I'm saying? Trying to use people and night people and all that backstabby ass shit or like, you know what I'm saying? It'd be better off just leaving people alone, man. Leave people where the fuck they at. And that shit be happening to me. And I always be with people that I got like, people that I got love for. So then in return, I be like, I don't know. Nigga be in a fucked up spot. But that's a dope ass part. I'm gonna cut Rooster hell like that tomorrow. I'm gonna get put Rooster in three little parts right there tomorrow. He gonna like that shit. This is his aquarium, AKA he's the king of hip hop. Can you ever look back on any and feel like you'd like to change any of the any of the things that you've written or uh it'll be me saying i want to go deeper i should have went deeper 
Hey, it is crazy that Kendrick called that shit though. It, it's crazy that Kendrick Ben like Kendrick Ben knew that nigga got down. You know what I'm saying? Had some had some flow adjustments in that bitch. <laughs> you know, um I shouldn't have held back. I shouldn't have held back. And at this point, Kendrick finally gets his well-deserved moment at the Grammys, winning five awards, but more importantly, he finally clinched the best rap album category with To Pimp a Butterfly. Oh, uh, glory to God, that's for sure. Drake also racked up a bunch of accolades in 2015. If you're reading this, it's too late. Broke Spotify's record for 17.3 million streams in its first week. Hotline Bling had dominated the charts, and his collaborative album with Future also did crazy numbers. Babe, I'm buying this. What a time island. to be alive. New pillows. Blender. Rug. And I mean, when that shit dropped, I was like, nigga, how do y'all know? Like, how did they, that shit drop at the perfect time? Because, boy, what a time to be alive, nigga. For real. Even at this point, anything Drake touches is going to do numbers. Next, we get some inside information that this situation between Drake and Kendrick could have got really ugly. Former NFL player turned commentator Marcellus Wiley wouldn't say any names, but said that years earlier he interviewed one of the two rappers and it completely went off on the other. <laughs> uh, the Drake Kendrick beef, uh, when it was really wow. starting to brew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was on uh, Sports Nation at the time and we taped the interview with one of the people and that one person went in on the other person. Oh. We were ready to let this go, uh, but then that one person's team made sure that didn't get out. Yeah, so. Marcellus was quoted in a mm. DJ Vlad interview as saying that the person went so hard in this interview that it could have brought the beef to the heights of 50 Cent and Ja Rule. And Damn. you gotta keep in mind, Marcellus is trying to sell a book, and he claimed that in this book, he would expose everything that was said and who said it. And I bought the book. I spent the $13.99. I didn't read it. I searched it. And here's what he had to say. We even got Drake on tape talking major shit about Kendrick during an interview. Of course, after watching the interview, Drake's publicist wouldn't let us air that tape, but we still got it. Take my word for it. So that's it. That is the big expose. Like, I too was cheated, hoodwinked, bamboozled, and led astray by Marcellus Wiley. Now, we need to take any self-promotion tactics with a grain of salt, but the date surrounding this thing is very interesting. Hendrick drops the control verse on August 12, 2013. In a Hot 97 interview on September 24th, Drake was very bitter, and the very next day, September 25th, Drake appears on ESPN. And you guys could tell me what you think, but to me, I believe this story. I believe that Drake did this, 100%. I personally enjoy making like great music and bodies of work over like being the talk of Twitter for like five days, you know? Oh. However, Damn. in 2016, one man dominated the charts and that was Drake, smashing record after record, pumping out hit after hit. Views sold one million in its first week and went on to become quadruple platinum that year. He had several number one records such as Work With Rihanna, For Free With DJ Khaled, and One Dance With Wizkid. One Dance actually became Spotify's most streamed song ever, and Spotify also announced that Drake was the most streamed artist of 2016. Basically in 2016, Drake just dominated. And speaking of For Free by DJ Khaled, Drake actually mentioned Kendrick on that song. Like your boy from Compton, you know this dick ain't free. Again, this appears to be more of a friendly nod to Kendrick, where Drake is referencing his song, which is also called For Free. This dick ain't free. However, 2017 was about to start, and Kendrick was about to take some of the most direct shots at Drake to date. What's most interesting about this track in particular is the timing of when Kendrick put it out. Drake had uh, just dropped his project More Life, which was mostly a happy go lucky. Hey, hey, G feels Drake. Hey, Drake say, nigga, I ain't finna have all these ops now. Nigga, I ain't finna, I ain't finna have, you know what I'm saying? He was playing it smart then. Like, okay. Shit, yeah, nigga, if, if I'm finna hit with, if I'm finna hit with Hove, then shit. Let me put this nigga on chill for a little bit. Because at that point in time, what you don't want is every rapper in the goddamn game trying, you know what I'm saying, doing what they're trying to do now. It's too late, though, shit. Too late to try to stop that shit now, cuz summer vibe that contained no shots at Kendrick whatsoever and just a few days later Kendrick drops this surprise aggressive 116 bar track that is full of shots at Drake Damn. One, two, three, four, five. I am the greatest rapper alive. So damn great, I've died. it's no secret that Drake has claimed to be somewhere on this top five list but more recently on more life he claimed that he was number one on that list I know I said top five, but I'm top two, and I'm not two, and I got one. Don't you have one, but it's not one, nigga, nah. 
So let me get this straight. Dang. Kendrick hears this track, gets the pen out, jumps in the booth, and sends a clear message just a few days after Drake drops that he's the best rapper alive. Oh, Jay Z, Hall of Fame, sit your punk ass down. Drake's been known to draw comparisons between himself and Hove, so it only makes sense that this shot was directed at Drake. Oh, man. If y'all don't got arcade, y'all better get arcade. It has the best samples in the game. A virtual instrument. I used to want to be on Rockefeller, then I turned into Jay. Lastly, Kendrick mm. ends off the track to surprise fans and warn Drake that he's got a new album coming in a few weeks. You know what time it is, any up, this is him forever. Y'all got to late for the seven to get your shit together. Kendrick was really strategic in releasing this track as it took most of the attention off Drake's project. And to add insult to injury, his fans flocked to Drake's Instagram account and spammed the number four in Roman numerals. And Kendrick, mm. true to his word, he drops the album and he has some more shots for Drake. Niggas wanna flex on me and be in LA for free, huh? Next time they hit the TM freeway, we need receipt, huh? Kendrick references Drake's track for free, and although Drake is from Toronto, he's lived in Calabasas since 2012. With that said, Kendrick is more than likely talking about how Drake was in Compton while shooting the video for 100. Kendrick is from Compton, probably didn't like it. Most of y'all throw rocks and try to hide your hand. Just say his name and I promise that you'll see Candyman. At this point, Kendrick is begging Drake to just call him out. He makes a reference to a popular 90s movie, Candyman, where the premise of that movie is if you say Candyman's name five times, he'll come kill you. Kendrick yeah. is basically saying, if you say my name, your career is dead. Mm. And I think Kendrick has something on Drake. Something scathing, something that Drake doesn't want to see exposed. We've already seen Drake a couple times now try to dead this thing. There's more coming. But yeah, Kendrick keeps going. And Kendrick seemingly mocks Drake's style of music on his song, God. You feel some type of way, then, ah, ah. There's nobody mm. going to tell me that he's not mocking Drake here because... Kendrick doesn't usually sound like this. This is Drake. Next, we hear Kendrick on Future Smash Hit Mask Off, and this That's one is a very direct response to one of Drake's shots. Very clearly a response to Drake's claims on 100 when he claimed that he could take all of Kendrick's fans if he were to pursue the conscious hip-hop lean. Been on stayed on some conscious shit. But Kendrick had proven time and time again that he could have commercial success and be conscious at the same time. At this point, he had three cohesive projects. And again, when you listen to that track, he's not compromising his sound. Like it is, he's still rapping. It, it's all bars. Now I always wonder why Drake said, "Uh, oh, goddamn, make that verse for the Swifties." I wonder why he was saying. I'm like, damn, Kendrick had did a Taylor Swift verse, nigga. Like, why I never remembered that? But damn, man, I'm fucking getting this. Oh, I'm sick, son of a bitch. Well, no, I think I just got a sinus infection. I don't even really. Like, I don't feel down. I don't feel, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, I'm sick. Well, no, nah, I don't feel like that. I definitely got a sinus infection. Now, this some bullshit. I hate these fuckers, dog. I hate them. 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 Now, I'm sure none of you forgot about Drake's ghostwriter claims, and Kendrick didn't forget either. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Kendrick gave his two cents on the situation. It depends what arena you're putting yourself in. I called myself the best rapper. I cannot call myself the best rapper if I have a ghostwriter. If you're saying you're a different type of artist and you don't really care about the art form of being the best rapper, then so be it. Make great music, but the title, it won't be there. And no matter how you slice it, the dude is not wrong. To be the best rapper, you need to write your bars. I would be lying if I said that when I found out that Drake had ghostwriters that I didn't look at his music differently. I still listen to his music, but even now, when he says something dope, I got this, this little voice in the back of my head that says, yeah, it's dope, but did he write it? However, Drake attempts to keep it friendly again by tipping his hat to Kendrick when damn outside life. That no, is true. It's true as fuck. I be having that same feeling, dog. By over 100,000 copies. Amazing to see our music moving. A fan had also commented, get Drake, Kendrick, and J. Cole on the same record, and Drake liked the comment. Now, I hope at this point you guys can see the theme of Drake trying to squash it. And Kendrick seemingly responds to Drake's praise on his track All the Stars with SZA. You and all your expectations. I don't even want your congratulations. Kendrick is not trying to hear it. Just save the bullshit. 
I don't even like you, bro. Like, which is true. This shit is starting to sound like Drake and Kendrick been talking to each other their whole career on every song. And that's definitely not the case, but <laughs> more or less for Kendrick, it's starting to look like goddamn everything Kendrick do he goddamn checking Drake on that motherfucker. However, on the exact same day, Drake drops a track with some of his most obvious shots to date, Diplomatic Immunity. They try to compare us, but like a job straight out of high school, there's no you and I. I taught you everything you know, now you got student pride. Mm. Drake does not like the Kendrick comparisons, and he brings it back to when he helped Kendrick with his career early on. What makes this clearly about Kendrick is the no you and I line, which were both tracks from Kendrick's The Pimp a Butterfly. And I know myself They've been talking straight to each other their whole goddamn career, Bursky. <laughs> the whole career, man. <laughs> the two would then go head to head at the 2018 Billboard Awards. Many question who would be crowned as Rapper of the Year. But they be trying to call Joe Budden, Joe Budden crazy, right? And Joe Budden been calling this shit out. Joe been saying, hey, man, both of y'all stop doing that puss ass shit and hit. Joe been trying to instigate him. <laughs> Joe been pushing Kendrick into Drake. And pushing Drake into Kendrick and trying to make one of them not, 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 not the other one got there rock off the shoulder. You know what I'm saying? But it's making for a hell of a storyline. It's making for a hell of a goddamn story. This shit gonna be Netflix worthy. Well, I ain't gassing it. When it goes down, when it's over with, when it becomes a part of his hop, hip hop history for sure, this shit gonna be fucking Netflix worthy, boy. Here and once again, Kendrick came out drastically ahead. Do you same thing, Jay Z and Nas? Yeah, it's definitely that's. Hey, it just it it def, it's there now. They definitely the Jay Z and Nas of this generation, and if it's a big three shit we just gotta find the third motherfucker cause J. Cole took himself out he just took himself out damn and that's sad stupid fuck he should have stayed quiet well nah from what I heard and to my understanding J. Cole didn't more or less apologize because he think Kendrick is better than him he apologized cause he caused the man like homophobic slurs and he was apologizing so he wouldn't get counseled by that community. Like once I looked into it, that's the, the the homework and the research. When I did my homework and research on why the fuck J. Cole apologized, because it didn't make sense to me. But he did call the man some homophobic slurs, like made some homophobic innuendos towards Kendrick. And it would make sense for him to apologize that today saying that we're not in a 90 or early 2000 era of hip hop it kind of make that part makes sense so yeah i mean i heard i i, I heard i heard i heard the did my little homework he, he gave him props and gave him credit words with due respectfully he would try and keep it as real as he could but more or less I feel like that was that was so he wouldn't get counseled. That was a, a please don't counsel me apology, bro. You know what I'm saying? That nigga let everybody damn right he let yeah he let everybody the fuck down with that bullshit. But when I did my homework and my, and my research, you know what I'm saying, facts and the evidence and all that old dumb ass shit, like yeah, he was trying not to get counseled. That's what that was, bro. He don't get no fuck about Kendrick for real. He still think he better than Kendrick. That nigga will try not to get counseled. And I can respect that. You love boating. Well, Freedom Boat Club makes boating easier than ever. Because um, <clears throat> it was only going to be a matter of time before all the praise and love that he was getting end up getting reversed back on him. And he seen that happening before it happened. Because when Kendrick responded, he definitely was going to shed light on that. And then motherfuckers was going to be like, oh, my God, J. Cole homophobic. Cancel him. Like, so he jumped in front of that before it happened. I give him credit for being smart in that sense. But shit, you know what I'm saying? 
as a man, as a wise man once said. <laughs> yeah, I know what I said. We don't need to drag it. <laughs> yeah, I know what I said. I'm standing that shit, and we ain't got to drag it. How about that? <laughs> that's what that would have been my reply. That's what if I'm, you know, what I'm saying I'm Jake. That's why I'm not Jake Cole. No, why I'm your mom. But if Kendrick would have said something about, yeah, I know what I said. Stand on that shit, and I ain't finna drag it either. How about that, bitch? <laughs> I come up with some slick shit like that to say, but you know, fuck. I understand why he don't want to get counseled. And yet again, Drake attempts to be friendly by sharing some old Twitter DMs between himself and Kendrick. Yo, my man, what's the word? Finishing my project, Section 80. When you back in Cali? I know that shit will be incredible. We got to do something for real. I'll be back for people. Yeah, he did that shit twice. He did the second time he done did it. That nigga on a fucking disappointment. He gonna do it again. <laughs> T Awards this month. And this could be one of two things, really. Like, Drake could be Damn. saying, look, man, we used to be cool. Like, remember? Can we get back to that? Or he could be just throwing this back in Kendrick's face again that he's the one that gave him a start and like, I put you on, remember? Regardless of the reasoning, Drake still had another subliminal for Kendrick on Sandra's Rose. Bury me and I'll be born again. I walk in godly form amongst the mortal men. Again, Drake makes- Hello, wait, 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 wait. Dang, bro. Hey, salute to bro. Bro broke this shit down. I ain't gonna fake. He breaking this shit down, with. He trapped Lil Ross in this shit. He doing a real condensed trap Lil Ross on this shit. Like, and it's so far. This, this kind of content I love, bro. I ain't gonna fake. Makes reference to another track from To Pimp a Butterfly with the words Mortal Men. In this one, Drake continues to insert himself as being a caliber above Kendrick. But I don't mm. know. I'm no mortal man. And Drake ends off the year with even more compliments for Kendrick in a Rap Radar interview. I have a lot of respect for, you know, the other two guys that I'm constantly, you know, up against, which is like Cole and Kendrick. Mm. Three-headed um, monster. Yeah, yeah. So I have a lot of respect for those guys because they also continue to, you know, stay true to what we started, started with um, and finding new ways to do it. However, things mm. go quiet in 2020. Keep in mind, Kendrick wasn't releasing any music and fans started to question if the feud was over. I don't think that the Drake-Kendrick tension is dead. I think that last decade, they fought as long as they could fought and the decade ended without us having a decisive winner. And I don't think either of them have, have gotten off of that. And people and people was thinking Joe was crazy when he said that shit. He was 100% dead on the moon. Call Joe crazy all the time. Damn it! That's why I rock with it. Yeah, see, that's why I can. Yeah, that's why I like this nigga. He's saying the same shit I'm saying. He see the. He been seeing the same shit that I've been seeing. But Joe Budden is right about a lot of shit. He is. And while dead right about a lot of shit. Kendrick has gone ghost. Nowhere to be found. Drake completely dominated the music business. I'm talking about Oprah's bank account, Tosi Slide, Nonstop, In My Feelings, God's Plan, Nice for What, Pop Star, Life Is Good, Chicago Freestyle, Laugh Now, Cry Later. This is just undeniable. Like, there's there's no other artist on earth who is doing this except for Drake. However, in 2021, the boogeyman himself, Kendrick Lamar, rises from the dead and has some shots for Drake on Family Ties with Baby Keem. Smoking on your top five tonight. tonight. Again, he's firing back at Drake's now overstated top five claims. Top five, no debate. Top five, top five, top five. And mm. Kendrick would continue on to address Drake's claims about being the GOAT. I am the Omega. At the end of the track, mm. Baby Keem seemingly reveals that Drake has been DMing his girl. However, just a month later, Drake would. Oh God, I always thought that was Drake. I always thought that was Drake. I always thought that was Drake. When that shit came out, me and my lady was sitting there listening to the shit. And I'm like, hey, yeah, he talking about Drake. He talking about Drake. She was like, why you think that? Why you say that? That nigga talking about Drake, cause Drake be bagging out it. Drake be knocking that goddamn man. <laughs> Back though Drizzy, a fool. That's all I'm hey, that's hey. Back though Drizzy, a fool, man. That nigga be all in these nigga back though, man. But when I heard that, I thought I was like, alright. 
But still, why would you like? I don't know. Yeah, go check that nigga. I ain't make no goddamn song. Or either check the bitch, one of the two. Do something. Why you got them? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That baby King line always tripped me out. But I always thought it was Drake. I knew he was talking about Drake. Would reply to Kendrick again on his song, No Friends in the Industry. Uh. Drake knows at this point when it comes to selling records, when it comes to breaking records, nobody is standing next to him in hip hop. He simply dominates on a commercial scale. With all that said, Drake was now celebrating 10 years of Take Care, and he decided to share an old photo of him and Kendrick. And I get it, like, you know, he helped with the project, nice gesture, but why keep doing this? Why keep being friendly to someone who doesn't respect you? However, at this point, four years have passed since Kendrick had dropped an album, and while he was on a milk box missing, Drake was still very much active, releasing Certified Lover Boy. That album went on to break Spotify's record for the most streams in a single day, and in that same year, he also had some notable bangers like Wants and Needs with Little Baby. But finally, after five fucking years, <laughs> we get the Kendrick album. Rain on me, put the blame on me, got your yep, that's exactly what I mercy. That's exactly what Jay-Z told now. Yep. He he let him know how they had more in common than just uh, how him and that boy AI had more in common than just balling and rhyming. Yep. <laughs> that tell Jay-Z snapped the fuck out. A lot of people did not like this album. I'm not one of them. I absolutely loved it. I'm also a big therapy guy because I'm I'm bipolar. I don't really have any choice but not be a therapy guy, but this project definitely connected with me, at least. And it was on this album where Kendrick admitted on a song that he didn't understand why Drake and Kanye squashed their beef. Some really bad guys are yeah. trying to kill me. I'm just a stunt guy. You thought maybe you could help me. We can't get get back for Drake. I was See, this motherfucker almost over. I drop it soon as it over. You know we could chop it up about this shit for a hot 30. We give it, put a hot 30 on it, be real quick. Be confused. Guess I'm not mature as I think. Guess I'm healing to do. And in my opinion, this is just Kendrick's way of telling Drake that he has zero intentions of ever patching things up with him. And there's people that we meet yeah. all the time that we just don't like. Like sometimes it's for no reason at all. And Kendrick's got a reason. Next, Drake gets extra petty by releasing a dance album, Honestly Never Mind, on Kendrick's birthday. If I come around you, can I be myself? Drake knows damn well that Kendrick is the last person that would ever release a project like this one. And what better way of saying, look at how versatile I am, than by dropping a project like this on his birthday. Now, I don't think this little stunt bothered Kendrick at all, but it was still pretty strategic from Drake. But Drake was not done yet. On a track with Lil Uzi, he took some really obvious shots at Kendrick. So just a few months earlier, Kendrick had very similar wording on his N95 track. Drake is insinuating that Kendrick is more or less running a grift when it comes to what he's saying in his music. He's basically claiming that Kendrick doesn't really stand by or believe what he's preaching, and he also reminds Kendrick that he's the one who put him on. What made this reference even more obvious is the line, now you gotta take a back seat, which is clearly a reference to Kendrick's backseat freestyle. And just like me, it looks like Drake really enjoyed Kendrick's new project as he showed up in the audience at Kendrick's show in Toronto. Yo, crazy, man. Again, Drake knows what he's doing. He knows the blogs are going to pick this up. The question is, was he there to show love or was he there to play chess? I mean, at this point, based on the history of Drake's friendliness, I'm just going to chalk it up to him just trying to be cool with them again. And for Kendrick, what better way of taking five years away than by dropping an album and cleaning house again at the BET Awards. Going into the awards, Drake was way ahead of everybody with 14 nominations, but it didn't matter because Kendrick mopped the floor with them, winning Best Hip Hop Video, Best Live Performer, Lyricist of the Year, Video Director of the Year, Album of the Year, and Artist of the Year. However, Drake wasn't very impressed with Kendrick's five-year delay, and he let everyone know about it while on tour. I don't know about these guys that go away three, four, five years and want to chill out and all that shit. That's not me. And I want to ask you guys this. How many times has Kendrick said something mm. nice about Drake in the last decade? Zero. Fucking zero. It's all been Drake. We've got seven or eight examples here in this video of Drake complimenting Kendrick, saying that he wants to do music with him, reminiscing on old times, just being friendly with him, 
and Kendrick has said fucking nothing. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. Yeah, I did a good job. He did. I did a good job with that. It came across my feet. Good to see it edited correctly. Here, what's the dirt? Yeah. Bitch, I'm about to blow up. Uh huh. Say what? <laughs> Bitch, I'm about to blow up. Man, man, man. That was a dope ass video, bro. He got some more shit. His thumbnails always pop up, bro. And I always be wanting to take them shits out. And I never do. Oh, yeah. I don't want to steal all of my dog content, but damn, he got some. He got some shit. How up? Yeah. I'm turning the notification on on this channel right here, boy. Bro, bro, that shit down. He got a Mace vs. Jay-Z. What? Tupac and Mob Deep? Bro. Yeah, bro got some bangers. Bro got some bangers. Let me holler at my bro real quick. Filza. Feels he still in I know, I know, I know Feels is still on deck, boy. Let's see. Let's chop it up to about three. <laughs> I got my ass in bed eventually. And that last nap I took, boy, it's something about, it, it's something about when I be like, I can't even call myself all the way sick, but it be something like when I be down a little bit, when I don't be a hundred percent, but that sleep be hitting different, man. Them be the best sleeps ever, cuz. Did I get Diana Wrench ever? My slow ass. There it go. Boom. That's what I was trying to do the whole time, get Diana Wrench though. I was trying to do that shit from the beginning. But hell yeah. <clears throat> well, no, nah, I gotta leave the backstage though, so I can see when you pop up. Man, man, that was a good ass video. And I listen, I pay attention and I be watching, but I like when people break that shit down, break it down in the timeline and like that. That video was fucking hard, bro. Sent to the DM. Oh, let me send uh, the link. Hold on, let me see. Damn, I'm gonna get on Instagram. I ain't been. I be motherfucking turning my Instagram notifications off. Shit, where it? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! Send the send this link to the Instagram DM. All right, bet, bet, bet. Nigga, I just put it in the chat. Crazy man. All right. Give <laughs> it to you real quick. It might be easier for you. There you go. Damn it. There you go, dog. <clears throat> what the fuck is that? Hold on, what is this? Turk. I don't think they know what. Turk. What's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, man? Good fan of yours, man. All love, bro. All love. What you got going, bro? Yeah, I, I'm making sure I don't get no flights because last time when I when I came home from jail, my little brother-in-law didn't want to make it fun, so. Yeah. These ain't no flight, man. You know, I don't really nah, know. Nah, nah, nah. These nah, like regular J's or something. They look different or something. They got a little camouflage on it looking like. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to get the unk stat. You know I don't want the unk oh, stat. Right. Yeah, I don't want the unk, so yeah. I don't make sure that I ain't getting the unk. Yeah, definitely, man. So these are not the unk. Those are not the unk, right? Here. Okay. Y'all. Yeah. Get your ass out of that stove, dog. Oh, my God. What the fuck was Turk doing? It won't let you. Why the fuck not? 
<clears throat> Go to sleep. Hell no, nah, just let me. Mm. Try this one. Oh, look, try this one. Hold on, try this one. Try this one. Try this one. God. Oh, there you go. See, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, we in there. Yeah, everybody thought I was motherfucking tripping. Everybody yeah. thought I was tripping. When I said, yo, Drake is uh, the comparisons. I said, yo, Drake is the Jay-Z 2.0, but he can he can sing. And he was like, man, you tripping. You don't ever put them in the two cent in the same sentence and this, that, and the third. I'm talking about dominating, about being slick and witty. The uh, uh, being the most popular, and if you look at Kendrick, right? People put the J. Cole analogy close to the Nas or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But J. Cole wasn't dropping, he would drop a little bit more than Kendrick. Nas' MO was I drop every four years. What Kendrick do? Drop every four years. Now, as far as them throwing bars back and, back and forth at each other, Nas and them, Nas been throwing. Now we just find, now we just finding out. We thought it, it started at a point where, from is that your chick? We thought it started from that, mm -hmm. and uh, um, even though that your chick was a bar, that whole song was about Nas, and people ain't know that. And then uh, so and it's the same thing. So they basically and and then Nas was dissing him on it was written, uh. Uh, talking about the Lexus and the dead president's video. Three mm. TV sets is the minimum. They've been talking about each other all the way up until 2001. Same thing with Kendrick. Same thing Same thing with uh with Drake. And if you go back and listen to Drake, what he was saying, and one of them joints, he was like, yo, I, I, want, I used to want it to be Jay. Now I turn into Jay. And yeah. then it was funny when you said that. As soon as you said something, then the dude when we watching said said start saying the same shit you just said, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I just said, yo, he was beefing with Jay around that time, and then Burr was like, yo, he was taking jabs right after we just said that shit. Then he started talking about Jay Z and, and Drake. He damn sure did. That's why I say I like dude content because he on point. He know his shit. <laughs> Yeah, people no point, people dude. thought I was tripping, man. Hey, look, man. Motherfuckers gonna start giving me my flowers, man. <laughs> Tell you. Telling you, yo, because I'll be listening, man. I'll be listening. And then, look, now I can reference back and forth the, the J and Nas and that, and the points just like old boy did, right? Hold on. Yeah. Let me, put yeah. Let me, get, my, let me get my shit right. Hold on. Just like on the blueprint too, right? <laughs> when he was like, uh, when he's talking about Nas, is it Uchi Wally Wally? It just one mic. Is it Black Girl Lost to show you owe you for ice? Even though they trying to help him cheat. Same thing with Drake saying that nigga shit is garbage. He talking about that conscious shit. Y'all yeah, trying to help his ass cheat. Nigga, yeah. And then look, the same thing that Jay said. Uh, what he say? Uh. Yeah, on some what you trying to kick? No, no, no. The one shit when he was like, truthfully, I I can rhyme like common sense, but I go with what makes sense. In the like sense, I, I know what I'm up against. I ain't been rhyming like common sense. Same thing with Drake. Drake ain't got never a conscious thing. It don't matter what the fuck going on. He's never gonna go on that route. He's gonna go with the money. So you can't sit here and tell me that these two don't mirror. These four artists don't mirror each other. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that's for damn sure. You're right. I ain't, it's no, I ain't got nothing to argue that. That's right. <laughs> that's why I say, man, we got to start breaking down the big three in every era. Because I want to know what, what, what big three would be the best big three. It's hard. It's hard. Like in the 90s. Yeah. The, all right. So early 90s, right? I was... Uh, when you was when you were saying it, I was like, "Yo, do you put Dre in there?" But well, Dre only had that one album, right? Mm -hmm. But in the early nineties, you talking about ninety one, the West Coast was dominated, right? Yeah. And then you had Biggie, 
So if I wanted to break it down, I would say, and you could, and you also could put Cube in there at one point in the early, and we talking about 90, yeah, 91, yeah. 92, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's a toss up. It's either who you going to put in there. Snoop is, is number one at that time. Because hip hop definitely traveled from different re like different regions was popular at different times, and that would be all you here for a little bit. Like, yeah, how Bird Collar when Nelly took off, nigga, the motherfucking St. Louis nigga started falling out the motherfucking blue cause we had. Oh no 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 no! Hold on hold on hold on! I'm gonna I'm get to that. So look, yeah. oh, so you got, I'm just I could be you could mismatch. It's all preference. Yeah. You could put Biggie, Biggie, and Snoop. And you could put Pac, cause when Pac went to jail and he released that album, mm -hmm. that album took off. Big three. Shit. People think people think it was just all eyes on me. Nah, that album went number one yeah, when he went to jail. Yeah, then it went all crazy. Right. All right, so now we fat. We go ahead and skip a little bit. Skip a little bit. So now, then the mid nineties was Jay Z, Nas, Biggie, Jay Z, and Nas. Mm -hmm. All right. So now you floating in the two thousands, right? Mm -hmm. So now Biggie's gone, and then there's the fight for uh, New York. It ain't even a, it ain't even a three. It's a two, right? Yeah, it's a two. It's All right, a so big ass. Yeah, it's a strong two. DMX it's a two. Came. DMX oh no no no, that's there. a no. Right right there. But I don't that, ever feel a, like I, feel, I always felt like DMX was his own entity, man. Like, nah, he's in the three at that time. He replaced. He like, took he, Biggie's spot. If it, if anything, he had to take Biggie's spot. Yeah, but look, it, but you had honorable mentions. That's why I'll be telling you when you be joking about old boy, and that's why Jay Z got on their ass. You talking about uh, Prodigy? And when he dropped that H and I C album, that okay. shit took nah, off. You know, I, I can't fake H and I. Everybody was on that shit except for me. Like I had that acknowledging. I get it. I get a new respect when it do Prodigy. Was uh, no, no, I'm, I'm gonna go through this quick. So, yeah. all right, so the rappers that was on the rise. All right, so it was, it was. Like Jay Z was trying to goddamn swat niggas off and goddamn <laughs> kick. He was trying to swat niggas off, steal they joint, steal they remixes, and kick, and kick Nas off the throne, right? Uh -huh. So, all right, I'm gonna do the honorable mentions. Cam, Cam on that uh, sex, money, and drug shit was on the rise. Noriega, um, first album was on the rise, what, and then yeah. JD, JD Kiss was on the rise. Nah, and then and then, was, and then the you, comparison nah, why you bullshit nori might have had a time where he was a part of a, a, a big three bro because ml flint the hustler like that shit was hitting too like they they had the scene then joint then they then nori went solo nah, 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 nah. that the melvin flint bro. the melvin flint the melvin flint didn't had a bigger a bigger impact than the nre album that was the super it, yeah, thug. of course of course nre that was the one, but I'm saying that nigga ain't. He, he I fought with Melvin Flint. Miss, I got you. I fought with the Melvin Flint joint. You know what I'm saying? And they got your boys up there on the Melvin Flint. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's why I don't know why you be goddamn talking about my boy Prodigy. Because nah. goddamn BG, BG snapped on young black entrepreneurs. But we going to leave that there, though, right? All right so, true that, true that, true that. so, all right. So, Cameron, Cameron, JD Kiss. And Nori was on the rise, but out of them three, JD Kiss had the stronger um Choco, right? And that's when not, and that's when Jay Z kept getting on the Maya the Maya remix, mm -hmm. the Fiesta remix, and that's when it started the Rough Rider um Rockefeller shit. Keep it a being right? at one point, Jay Z had to go get R. Kelly for some motherfucking help. Yeah, basically. All right, so now, <laughs> now, all right, so look, so look, so look, take okay. this out. Word. All right, so Nas, Nas come through, Nas hit him with the bomb, 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 right? Yeah. All right, he win the battle, but he loses, he loses the war, right? So then, now as the two thousands is changing, Eminem is becoming the machine. So now it's Jay Z, Eminem, and Pimp Juice, and then when he came out with Ace of the Izzo, he said the only people selling records is Pimp M me. Me and Pimp Juice and us mm -hmm. is the rock in here. Cause won't nobody out selling Nelly right at that point. <laughs> Fact, no. <laughs> it was hard to fuck with that nigga. Bro. I'll keep it in the box. And if your man was up here, this that shit I was talking about. He don't want this type of smoke over here. Nah. 
I yeah. digress yeah. to get back to what I was saying. All right, so now we oh, going. Kevin, I love this conversation. He, he so would, Jay, we just have to catch him sober because he wouldn't. He wouldn't be able to handle it drunk. So Jay, so Jay, goddamn, starting to wind down, right? Uh-huh. And then certain smart artists started goddamn dipping. Like Nori was like one of the first up north rappers to start fucking with South rappers and shit. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. Bleak, Bleak made a key move and started fucking with Trick Daddy and Ti. Then T, then Jay started looking at Ti like, hey, man, they call this nigga me of the South. So mm-hmm. he started goddamn trying to politic with Ti because he they starting to feel the wave changing. I'm trying to All beat right, bro. He beat yeah, bro. Look, 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 see he how I'm yeah, but look, but see how I'm about to set this play up, right? Okay. So if, if a listener listening to me, they probably think, yeah, I remember that time. But no, wait, there's more. <laughs> I'm setting it up. <laughs> All right. So now, Jay-Z still got the ho- game in the hole, right? Then Ludacris comes out of nowhere, right? Yep. So now you got, you got, you got Jay-Z, Ludacris, and Eminem, and Nelly. That's mm-hmm. a fool. And that's why Nelly said he had the hardest error in that interview. So now, listen to the people I just named. And then you got a dude from Southside Queens that fucking Jay-Z knew was a threat. Because he told his whole camp, y'all niggas been to put out albums before 50 dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and I am skipping a person. I got to give him his flowers. I am skipping a person. It, we said a three in our 2000s, but then you got to insert Ja Rule. Yeah. It was a point where it was Nas, Jay Z, nah, Bur- DMX, and Daru. Yeah, Burke out it. Yeah. Bon. So I just want to go back and backtrack that, make sure I put him in his order. Bon. So as that shit started dying down, then you had it's still Eminem still on top. Yeah. Nelly still on top. Jay Z, like y'all can have that shit. And then <laughs> and then fucking Ludacris. Ludacris is still smashing out. And then Kanye West come out of nowhere and Jesus 50's Christ. in the mix. So yeah. that's what? Four, that's still four motherfucking... That's still four heads right there. Mm-hmm. All right. So in that time, the South started... All right. So we got the college dropout, the feel good music and shit. And then in the mix of that, Wayne is doing a restructure. They doing... Cash Money is doing the... They doing the restructure. They, say, they cleaning in the house. This time, nigga, why all these niggas cooking? You got this little hungry motherfucker, goddamn, getting on every beat. Hey, look, I got you. Right, hold up, let me let me paint. Let me but paint. Nah, let he me ain't paint. nowhere near the big three yet. So now nah, you doing your shit because it's, it's not right. Let, let me cook. Wayne let me yet. cook. Yeah. Hold up, mom. Hold up. Let me cook. Let me cook. Yeah. So look, bum. So then, Jeezy come out. Now, Ti been out for a minute, but the first two albums ain't it ain't. It ain't get there yet, right? Mm-hmm. Then it get there when fucking Swiss Beats jump on that fucking shit with the Jay Z hook. So now you come out at it. I went to this tour, the Georgia Power Tour, was Ti was the headliner, the middle person was the fucking Jeezy, and the one that was opening the third act was Wayne. Then Wayne got down. Oh, I am skipping a person. I'm skipping a person. In the mix of all that, Cameron was in the mix of that shit too. With yeah, Dipset. Cameron had his rebirth. Yeah, bon, so that's that part. And we, then he, he was he was back there way back then with bigger than he was harsh and carrots cam. I remember harsh and carrots camera. Yeah, but, but harsh and carrots cam. Nah, we a lot of people that was like I said, lyrical miracle fuck with. The horse and carriage cam. Mm-hmm. This at this particular juncture, Cam was turning into the my computer's computing, and he was selling <laughs> the fuck out of records. You couldn't go nowhere without hearing a dipset mixtape. Nowhere, yo. You know what I'm saying? Rap beats that nigga was going crazy. Yeah. All right. So, and then it just became a point when niggas like, yo, we. Ain't, 53rd album came out, and niggas like, yo, man, we tired of hearing that up north shit. And then fucking Wayne, Jeezy, and T.I. had that shit in the choco. Why you want to go and do that? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Look at look, look, like a lollipop. That shit was a rap after that. And then got down, Wayne started killing all T.I. and Jeezy by just got being on every fucking feature. You can't feel my face, goddamn mixtape. 
Weezy made sure he got them dominated the fucking airways for at least goddamn a good seven summers, yo. Yeah. And then you fast forward to where he's starting to slow down. He's like, you know what? I, I don't want to carry the weight no more. I did it. So let me start getting get artists to put money in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? Let me go get Drake and Nicki. Yeah, he go get Drake, Nicki. Uh, what's the other nigga? The nigga from Cali. Tiger. He go get them. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Shit, one so time, now, Wayne, Drake, and Nicki was the big three. Yeah. So look, don't get to it. And then look, but look, 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 look how I'm about to tie myself into it, though. Yeah. All right. So now. You did have a curveball come out of nowhere from Pittsburgh, where Wiz Khalifa caught on a goddamn fire, where he started dominating for at least two summers, right? In the mix of when Drake and them were about to take off. I would say he, Wiz had more or less like that underground and hips. Nah, 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 nah. I'm talking about that black. I'm talking about that black. Hold up. We know boys. Yeah. That yeah. out. Oh, well, he did. He, yeah. Yeah. This, now we in the mid 2000s. He did his shit. He yeah, did, I don't feel like he was ever he was ever doing enough to be a part of the big three because it like, shit. He's still you got to be in it. You see, you looking at it from the big three that we used to. The the music is really changing by two thousand nine, two thousand and ten. Nah, so like, it's it, it really in the deck. Still exists with in the same era with 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 Kendrick and Drake, and we is ain't never got down been bigger than Kendrick or Drake. Nah, he was out before them. I, I ain't even get to the Kendrick part yet. All right, so look, Kendrick. Oh, and I and I did skip. A, I skipped somebody too. Game had a run. Now, see, Wiz Mac and Currency was the big. I would say they were the big three on the underground shit. Cause I was, I would, I would never, I wasn't giving Wiz mainstream. I wasn't looking at him like a mainstream artist until we them boys and. You know what I'm saying? Like it was definitely a time we he okay he was undeniable. You know what I'm saying? He was on the song with the uh fashion for the for for uh my man from Fast and the Furious. Like he had a big ass time, but nah, yeah we talked like paper planes air with and, and when currency was dropping the motherfucking mixtapes every fucking month. Like them niggas had yeah I think they had more. No, like, I'll say I'm just throwing out the time. I'm they just throwing out the time. Market smashed up. I'm just throwing out a timeline and yeah. when the music was trying to sort itself out because the sound was changing. Okay, no, and it no, wasn't no, you're a right. music you did that's right. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking yeah. well, that's like big three shit still. But no, 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 you're right. right. I'm, well, no, I'm throwing it out there so so we could pick the big three. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I and I missed game. Game was in that early 2000 when he took off mm -hmm. with the back to back albums. All right, so now yeah. Uh, all right, so now if we're going year by year. Wiz had Wiz had a year. Well, he got yeah. on somebody's shit. So yeah, I'm I'm with you. I see where you coming. All from. right, so now so now Drake is slowly cooking up. Now Nikki is cooking up, right? And then um Meek is starting to creep creep around. Oh, Meek Big Sean, Big Sean, Big Sean, Big Sean is is starting to creep around. Yeah. Big Crip just ain't never have it. He was nice, but he didn't have a push. Big Cause it's, was it's a whole class. six man, like big, like yeah, uh, a four, It's he, a class man, in them. He maxed out. He he might have maxed out in the top five one year. I think his yeah. best year. He might have like you had to put him in the conversation. See, or not top five might be. You know what I'm saying? Big Crit was one of the ones though. And, and then and then so now this is where I when I tell you the story that my people who was there and opened up for game. Yeah. And we didn't know who the fuck Nipsey Hussle was until that night. And we didn't even know who the fuck Kendrick was. And Kendrick was dead yeah. when Game took him on tour. Now, the shit that Drake's saying, yeah, he took him on tour, but that nigga don't, he trying to say he, like he took him on his first tour. No, fucking Game took them niggas on their fucking first tour. It was Kendrick. Kendrick wasn't even the main card. It was, uh, what's the other nigga from TD? TD, uh, Top, I'm not top dog. K K Rock or some shit. He was the main shit, and them niggas, them niggas was under him, right? And that's the night we figured out who the fuck they was. Mm. So that's all a class, right? Yeah. And then French Montana is in the middle of that shit, but they ain't take off yet. And then did I say? Oh, I'm skipping Rick Ross in the timeline. So, yeah. so 
Rick Ross is around that Jeezy era. Yeah. So now, all right. He kind of swapped Prince, out. He he kind of like traded Jeezy out a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I and I forgot. Like when, I forgot. When, when I Jeezy forgot. Guap. Started getting cold. That's when Ross was on that motherfucker. I think I'm Big Meech, Larry Hoover. You ain't fuck with Rick. No, Ross. no, 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 no. He didn't. No, he swapped out Ludacris, because now it got to the point in the mid 2000s before it got to like 2011. Like 2006, 2007 was more Guap, Ross, and T.I. Yeah. And the T.I. shit slowed down because of the gun charges and shit. Yeah. And then Guap started got, because Guap started getting his just do at that time. He had the streets buzzing, right? Yeah. He had now the we get to- yeah. Like when the South was so enough hot, when the big three was. T.I. Wayne and, and, and got down Jeezy nigga. Goo Wop Down Show had the underground on fire, so yeah. Like a lot of people would be saying shit, you need to put one you need to put Goo Wop in that motherfucker instead of one of them niggas, so you right. I was gonna put goddamn Lil Flip in there, but it, he was only in that bitch for one album. That nigga motherfucker only had forgot fucking a song. Like he didn't even talk about like a one hit wonder type shit, but he hit hard. He came through strong. Shit, yeah, nigga was going flip crazy to him and T.I. got into it. That's what happened to Lil Flip. T.I. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Flip might have been all right if T.I. would have never got down. If it wasn't that. Same thing with Ja Rule. Back then, shit, boy. It was cut though back then. It wasn't enough room motherfuckers had to get took out back then, but if you wanted to be somebody in hip hop, yeah, you gotta take a nigga out. Whoever doing it, nigga, fuck you. It's me now. That nigga ain't it no more. I'm it now. Yeah, it's big enough for everybody to do that thing, but I, I think Broski followed that. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this joint up, man. We're we'll getting some more hip hop talk. Mainstream or the underground shit. I love both. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get back to it tomorrow. i come up with something. OG's Youngest, day one's new members. i check.